I will open our school committee meeting for February 9th. If we could all stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll do introduction of members. Ted Nobile Millville. Carrie Goddard, Blackstone. Dan Keefe, Blackstone. Tammy Lemieux, Blackstone. Charles Dunton, Blackstone. Ashley Johnson, Blackstone. Kylie Sacco, Blackstone. Erin Vinaco, Millville. And Jason DeFalco, Superintendent. Thank you so much. And we're very excited to have our student reps join us. We were just talking about how much we've missed you. Um, so whoever would like to start. Yeah, I can start. So the varsity girls made um, their playoffs for basketball, so we're very happy to hear that, very proud of them. Um, food for Thought is continuing their monthly faculty lunches where they make food for the faculty members, have lunch with them, and it's overall a great time for the students and the teachers to get to spend a bit of quality time together. And then the high school is adding new courses for the next year. I don't know much, but I know one of them is a history course about brain development on childhood trauma, kind of studying that. So I thought that was definitely a cool course to add. And then NHS put on um, a winter, like lightly used clothing drive organized by me. I had some advertising done with a couple of other students and we did that for about a week and I went and dropped off the donations last week. Also, NHS has our tickets out for our empty bowl fundraiser. If anyone would like to buy one, you can just email us, but that's gonna be March 15th in the high school cafeteria from 4.30 to 6.30. So student council has, um, we just finished up a cat shelter drive. So we asked students to bring in things like toys, food. I know someone brought in a sweater for a cat. <laughs> so we're gonna donate that. Um, we do have a co-op swim team with three of our students and it's at, we co-op with Grafton. They're doing very well. I know we have some, they've been winning a couple of times. We just entered our second semester, and on Tuesday we hit the 100th day of school. So that's very exciting. For seniors, yesterday we had a fourth quarter internship meeting. It's when you sign up for an out of school internship <coughs> instead of, and if you're on the right track for graduation, instead of coming to school for fourth quarter, you can get a like an internship job for the same amount of time that you would go to school for that week. Um, we also have 10 seniors doing an in-school internship for the, this semester. It's when we go to the elementary schools or the um, middle school, and we like help out with students and teachers. Um, I'm one of them. It's really exciting. I get to help out with my little first graders, and it's very. And we go out for like two periods a day, so it's, it's really nice. We're recruiting. We're getting them while they're young. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come back very and teach cool. with us. Very fun. Very nice. So empty bowl. Uh, it looks like Ashley has some tickets to sell for if anyone wants to. <laughs> and uh, Tammy, you just said do we have a meeting that night? I think you said it's a Wednesday. Um, so it's a, not one yeah, of our so Wednesday. Oh, I didn't so hear the Wednesday part. Sometimes we Wednesday, end up doing yeah. something Wednesday. before. We almost right? always have yeah. a meeting. And so we'll have we to keep that date. Three fifteen. Yeah, that is a Wednesday. Yep. St. Patrick's Day is on Friday this year. <laughs> um, I have zero cash, but we'll. So we can just email you or. Yeah, yeah. email me, Mr. Rowe, whoever. I can give these back to Tori. Does anybody have Venmo? I live by Venmo. I do. If anybody has Venmo, not you. <laughs> Someone involved with that. Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. You get, I'm I get all cash over that. too, so I would have just paid. That's what I Tell me what you, your name Have I'll... you started creating your bowl? Uh, yep, so we started painting them and we started um, glaze firing them. Most people have made them and I think about like half have painted half them have themselves. Painted them. yeah. But we're trying to have all of them done before February break so we can have those ready for the fundraiser. Perfect. Perfect. And do we have a girls varsity schedule yet for players? I think their next game is next Wednesday. I'm not 100% sure, but I did hear they're playing Southbridge at 5 o'clock. I'm not, 
I think it's in Southbridge. I'm just not sure the actual date. Good job, basketball Kylie. That mom. Was that was right. Mom that was right. Yeah. I just overheard the conversation. That's their just first sure. playoff. No, that's their oh, fine. Their like last final regular first. season game. We don't have a schedule for anything beyond that yet. And is there a Clark oh, tournament sure. update? No. Girls did not make Clark they tournament. Did. All right. Well, we will look for the schedule for playoffs for sure. And. Thank you so much. Any other Hi. questions for our student reps? No. Can you just write your Venmo? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can just put it on here. And sure. I'll take care of business later. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, ladies. Of course. Have a great night. Enjoy okay. your the, – the internship goes through fourth quarter. Yes. So, so it's till the seniors graduate. So it's very exciting. How are we doing next? Have a great night. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so next we're looking for a motion for consent agenda A, which is warrants and minutes of January 12th meeting. So moved. Second. Carry, second by Dan. Any discussion or questions? The minutes yeah. came in our email. All those in favor of consent agenda A? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Two minutes. And we have public forum for anyone that wanted to address our committee today. And moving on to school committee items, school committee policy manual sections D and E. Oh, of course, I'm lost. All right. Yeah. Okay, Floor you is roll, yours. I, I updated E. Okay. So we have e. Okay. <coughs> You, no, she's got oh, okay. she has okay. The little one? Yeah. Is that the every other? This is the correct one. Oh, so we don't the little one. Is the, the little one is the correct okay. one. Okay. Or the the yeah. one in our packets is not. D is fine. E needs to be replaced. Perfect. What's the new little one? Thank you for doing that. Yes. So um, I went through, um, again, uh, policy section D and policy section E. And I made uh, requested revisions based on MASC recommendations. So they update their policy manual sort of as they go. And I just went through their uh, reference one and, and updated. And for most of both sections, there's a lot of, you know, um, just word changes and, uh, you know, the, correcting the politically correct gender um, neutral kind of language. Um, so what I'll do is I'll kind of go through, and if you have questions or you have um, things that you've already noted, we can talk about them. Um, so uh, section DA um, has some updated language. And uh, just for the record, I did share this with Jason as well prior to today's meeting to just see from his purview if there is anything questionable that um, he was concerned about or that we weren't um, in line with. So um, DA, some of this language is also um, changing it to be regional language um, as well. So um, are there any questions on fiscal management DA? Do you have to do all this red, or is this what comes from you, from? Well, I have to cut there. and paste and type the new language, yeah. but um, you do it in a certain screen so that it will redline okay. it. Um, annual budget, it just kind of reworded things here. Um, and then, you know, gave a guideline as far as making presentations when you're doing the budget, that kind of stuff, which we have already done anyway. Um, so that's that. I just find it hard to believe that we had words in here that say school department instead of district. Yeah, it's just and like it why are we correcting this just, now since um, we updated so recently? Yep. Yeah. Um, next one is obviously uh, doing it pursuant to the state formula. They changed some language there. DBC, there's nothing there. D, uh, DBD, they added this um, 
language in that wasn't in existence before. My guess is it was there before and then they took it out and they must have decided to put it back in for budget planning. Um, and again, we follow this guide. We followed this anyway. Um, sorry, I'm like sort of going through. Just stop me if you have any specific questions. Obviously, I know you guys. Um, DBJ, when we talk about budget transfer, they uh, added in the language of cost centers, which we again have been using. Um, and the transfers must be done by full committee. That language wasn't in there, but again, something we've already been doing. Section D, D, you see a big giant note on there because it said, um, it had some language in there about um, a manual. I just wanted, I, I did check with Jason. We do in fact have a manual, um, grant proposal manual in place. So we are okay there. Um, DEC is an added um, policy with respect to federal funds supplement, not supplant policy, um, and talks about how they should be, uh, dis the federal uh, grant sh fund should be dispersed authorized signature just updates the district fiscal accounting and reporting just trying to brought my reading glasses um, again just talks you know changes it from state requirements to the the actual uh, accounting system district audits we talked a little bit about this um, this is the language they added in here. Is this the section, Jason? About the uh, n um, red nine and months. small is really making my eyes go crazy. The nine months. The nine after months. The yeah. Year concludes, which would bring us to the end of March. Yeah. Right. So that language, um, Jason has been talking about with the auditor auditors. Yep. as well as with our assistant treasurer. Is that his title? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is it okay if I mention this yeah, sure. for sure, a minute? Sure. So essentially the policy reads that we, we have nine months after the closure of the prior fiscal year to get the audit done. Um, the discussion we have been having with our auditors is that this is, they've never heard of this. So um, they have operated under the notion that the audit from the prior fiscal year needs to be done by the end of June and that next fiscal year. So in other words, that would mean by June 30th, we would have FY22 done and audited. This policy is clear that it needs to be done by March 31st. Um, they have shared, the auditors have shared with me, they don't even start this level of auditing until April 1. So we, you know, we've got a, we have a little bit of an issue there in that we're now at February 9th um, securing an auditor that could have this done by the end of March makes me very nervous. I don't know that that's even feasible, to be totally frank. So um, I just want to put that out there that I, I think, the, as Tammy and I were kind of discussing, I think the policy makes very good sense. I just I don't know that we have a pathway to meeting this this year. But by June? By June 30th, yeah. Okay. And I'm just speaking for this year. Right? It doesn't mean moving forward that we could, that would you know we would have time to find another auditor if they can't do that moving forward. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, okay. Tammy. You're welcome. Uh, DJ purchasing. Just, oh my God, I'm so much. just adds in some language um, with respect to. Um, uh, the responsibility, adding some guidelines to the responsibilities of the superintendent. <laughs> Those are easy to pass. <laughs> no worries. Um, purchasing okay. authority. We took out the language of assistant, um, su assistant superintendent. Um, and then again, that cost center language has been added in there. Um, Procurement requirements, they um, changed 
the amounts here um, to be a supplier service over $50,000. Um, bids will be sent out, um, as you can see from the crossed out language prior, it was um, purchases valued between $10,000 and $50,000. So that's an MSAC guideline. <clears throat> and this was a, a legislative update last year. And then it continues. Again, procedures to regulations on DK and aligned with uh, internal revenue standard mileage rate was added for uh, expense dis dis uh, reimbursements. Each one. Uh, so yeah, I think that's easier. Yeah. Uh, a motion to approve section D updates for our policy manual as presented. Motion to approve. Motion made by Dan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Kerry. Any questions for Tammy and the updated? Policy. Okay. All those in favor of approving policy manual section D? Aye. 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 Abstention. And then we move on to um, policy section E. And again, it, we should be using the version that has the smaller print. The other one is um, not a complete package, so I noticed how you not do you do need that help with this one? Do you one? have this one? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. Do you need help with this <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> my, my eyesight just got a little worse on this one. Um, so uh, <coughs> safety plan. I'm actually, I'm trying to see my notes because there was one section. And of course, I wrote on a ECAF. Okay. Um, so a uh, safety plan that's, uh, you know, just removed some language over there in the uh, fourth paragraph um, and it included health and safety as a whole versus individual um, agencies. EBAB, the pest management policy, just um, district updates, the, the word district. Uh, first aid, we just add in the uh, Board of Health and School Physician um, is added. EBC, we just wrote out what AED stands for. Uh, emergency closings is just adding guardians. Buildings and ground management, nothing major there. I think this is the one I want. I can't see. Oh my God. C -A -F. Okay. Sorry, I have to, again have some notes. Um, then on ECAF, we just have to, I think, one, one second. We just have to look at one, two, three, four, the fifth paragraph in our district, the recommended language here in that last sentence says law enforcement and emergency response officials shall be granted access to video recordings or the security system um, as the situation requires. Our cameras are what do we call it hardwired yes wired, hardwired so. do you want to speak to that point jason yeah sure uh, the the camera system in our district is already hardwired to the uh, blackstone police department so they they have the ability to they wouldn't even ask us they, yeah they have it. they have it okay. and we have that uh in our memorandum of understanding with the police and it just makes sense. Not know. that they wouldn't ask us, but they, we wouldn't have to like release something to them no. because they already have. Well, uh, so we just have to change this language in the f sentence prior to that because it says access to the video recordings from cameras shall be limited to school 
administrators period and it lists the so we're going to add um, we're going to change this slightly to be school administrators superintendent designee school principal designee and law enforcement period and then take out the and and then emergency response officials will get it as the situation requires so we just want to note that the access to the video the police already have that so we're going to put them in the first the prior sentence and then start the new sentence with emergency response officials so that's the change since we um you know shared this is and there any questions on that and that was for safety reasons so they get real they have real time information at dispatch which is what you want um edc EEA just adds the 7D contractors language there. Um, EEA, EEAA, they don't make that easy. Um, so this outlines, and I just wanted to bring this up because um, I guess one of my questions for you all, this their language um, has the actual mileage that the MASC and the, the reg, um, student transportation services recommends and so we go a, we go beyond what this policy says but I guess my um, you know if we <clears throat> I, you know I guess the question for I have is should we keep this language in even though we go beyond it we don't have these required in in our town it's just because of safety in many situations but um this was the recommended language i left it in i don't know i just wanted to ensure that everybody was okay with this being in as is <clears throat> as far as the guidelines for each grade okay <clears throat> are we not required and i'm just asking because it's new to me that I always I was under the belief that we had we were required to provide transportation for every student in the district as a regional school district is that correct or incorrect these are the guidelines as it relates to the distance from school to home we don't have as you know most of our streets don't have sidewalks no no I, I'm so I'm, we bus we as bus far as under the, the no, regional agree. agreement I, I, yeah, we bus all no. the yeah I was just I was I'm just saying I was under the impression that we were required to as a regional school district um i'd have to go back and read the regional agreement i don't know we, i don't know if we I, I, I thought it was a state thing and, and I, I think it's just one of those things that you've heard over years over years that um yeah. that we were required to transport every student in the district i believe that's the case i'm certainly happy to double check that but I, so, I just or if, do we put something leave this as is that additionally the school committee will provide transportation for students as follows, which is what's recommended. And then underneath it, do we have some I guess type of interestingly, Dan, as you bring that up, in most cases in this policy, when regional districts have Something like good. sort of special clauses because they're regional, there's an alternate like so it'll have recommended and then the next page of the of the guidance will say for regional districts use this one mm -hmm. but this section didn't have that but that doesn't mean if they don't have to, we don't follow different yeah. rules i feel like I, I know what you're talking about dan i just can't put my mind in it right now but I, do we add something here saying that the school committee at, at this time chooses to or do we say provide not with uh, we go th that we're going beyond above and beyond this or, policy or would you want to put language that just says at a minimum right we would follow these because that, we have ex exceptions to this these guidelines maybe made at the discretion of the superintendent which right. why instead of yeah. transportation Taking out BMR like why is that being struck because throughout the document so we use school generic. committee we are this this is our policy manual so we are yeah. the school committee 
and I'm, I'm just, I was only questioning, I'm not, you know, really no issue with changing any, anything. It's just I was always under the impression that that was. I think it has something to do with our Chapter 90 reimbursement. Right. I, and I can't, I always thought there was something to do, but I don't. We do submit the we do submit the transportation schedule. It's I forgot what schedule schedule C or something. We send it to the Department of Ed every year so they can essentially cross check our enrollment versus our ridership, and then you know we that gets applied toward our reimbursements. That I'm positive of, but um, I know when when, I, when having prior discussions with administration like uh, with district and school building administration we've talked about like this piece about hazardous areas we just you know there's not a lot of sidewalks yeah yeah and, I, and I'm in full agreement with that it was just because the first sentence of it is students will be entitled students will be entitled to transportation to and from school at the expense of public schools when such transportation conforms to applicable provisions of mass general laws and then these here are just um, the guidelines down below I'm not sure if that's that could be different but I was just the only point I was ma just trying to clarify is I just was always under the assumption that we had to provide transportation for and I and I think we should I'm not saying we shouldn't but then I understand the point Tammy if we added in the additionally the school committee will provide transportation at minimum for students as follows with that Cover us. You know what? I was go going to recommend anyway. that we. Why don't we table this particular one? I'm looking. I have actually brought my Mass General Law book in case any <laughs> questions go. came up. But maybe we just table this one and because I don't. I guess my thought and I. It. It sounds like maybe Dan and I is thinking this. Like if if we have to transport every single student anyway, why have this as as written? even if that's the recommendation. But like I said, the two things that make me wonder and that are that every other section that had some special regional thing, they had another page that, mm -hmm. so if it's a truly just a regional district, every regional district has to do this. Can you just, you know, I'll see if I missed that. Um, but then we can also, I'll, I'll cross-reference the sections of uh, Mass General Law that they have noted here and see what I see and look um, again at the regional agreement to see if it's language there that has, you know, says we have to yeah. bus every, every kid. And I'm uh, happy to help you with that. Tammy. It seems kind of harsh, don't you think? The, 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 the right, mile idea. and a half and the mile. Two miles. Two miles. So so seven two yeah, why well, have it in the, uh, I don't know. So if I can walk so almost anywhere in town. By so harsh, you mean it seems like far, it's like a far distance. It's like if, I know. Why would we put some other school committee might come along and say, well, we we're going to enforce to. this. Yeah. yeah. So. But I feel like there is something that would stop our reimbursement if we weren't doing it. And I, but maybe it is just the mile, Dan. I, and we've chosen, and I feel like we've sat at other meetings and said, we don't have to do the mile, but we do. No, and we've I, pointed it out in the past. Yeah. This is the same. This is actually the same mileage that most of Rhode Island districts also use. So, so I don't know if it's a federal recommendation, but I know Cumberland has these same amounts. And and quite honestly, districts in Massachusetts don't even provide busing. So, but I think we hold it until we get the questions answered. Well, yeah. So Mass General Law Chapter Seventy One Sixteen Regional School District School Transportation. The regional school districts shall be subject. To to all laws pertaining to school transportation when the agreement provides for furnishing the transportation by the regional school district. The regional school district shall
it and it's sense. because in the first sentence of the Massachusetts general laws, it references it, but this is not what it's, what the policy is below is not mass general law. So that may have been a school committee or a suggestion yeah. through the basic um, template. That, lo that looks more like, like this would, grades one through three, students living more than a mile, four through six, that looks like a, uh, like a, 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 a town school district, not a regional school district. Dan, can, it was chapter 71, section what? 16 uh, C. 16 C. 16 C, okay. Just so we go back and do some research on that. So, I, again, I'll, I'll recommend that we hold it. Just, I mean, I think that seems clear, but then what I would like to s ask MASC is if there are any suggested policies for regional districts with respect to walk, I mean, as titled walkers and riders. So we're going to hold just EEAA? EEAA. Okay. Thanks, Dan. I got that. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. You got, I, sent, I sent it over to you. No, thank you. And you too. I sent it to you as well, Tammy. Thank you. I'm just, I'm sticky noting it in my hard copy as well. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, nothing else for the next couple that are significant. Um, the other one, uh, E, 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 A, E, C. A, E, C? E, E, A, E, C. I feel like you're saying the alphabet. Student conduct on the school bus. Um, I have an email into MASC, as you see on this language that's crossed out, that they recommend removing. The driver of a school bus shall be responsible for the safety of the students on a bus, both during the ride and while students are entering or leaving the vehicle. Therefore, it is the driver's, bus driver's duty to notify the principal of the school involved if any student continues to violate the established rules of conduct as detailed in the student handbooks. So the question I had, and, and we, uh, Jason and I talked about this, is why would that be crossed out? Like, how would we as a district or principals know what's happening on the bus if we don't expect the driver to let us know? Yeah, they didn't so replace that was sort it with of the anything. question. Yeah, they didn't replace it with anything. So no. um, okay. it says, you know, the authority for for enforcing the requirements go, fall on the principal. But if if there's no requirement for the bus driver, I, mean, I don't know. It was just kind of a weird thing to take out. So do we so, hold E E A A? -E so I think we should hold E E E E A E C as well, please. And it, I mean, it also impacts another section, but it was just, um, I, don't, I don't know <clears throat> if there was a reason for that. Um, <clears throat> others are, it talks about having quarry checks. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Then we get to, I apologize in advance, EFC, free and reduced price food <laughs> services. <laughs> our, our favorite one. Um, Mass MASC recommends the language of in accordance with guidelines for participation in these programs in accordance with the wishes of the committee. No student who a teacher believes is improperly nourished will be denied a free lunch or other food simply because proper application has not been received from their parents or guardian. So that is the language addition that is recommended on that page as far as free and reduced. Just wanna. Is everybody okay with that? Different than the unmade, unpaid meal charge policy, which is next. Because this is if we feel they aren't able. I mean, I think if. Wait, if no, the way it's if written. Application is so a process. If, yep. if their application, I mean, I think if their application 
maybe hasn't been. I mean, a, a, a lot of times I know in my district, a lot of times people who we think might be eligible, they don't bring their paperwork back. So they don't get the lunch and then they accrue all these charges. But we, you know, think like maybe they just can't. But so this would allow, um, this would have us still provide them lunch, <coughs> especially since we, you know, if, I mean, I guess the Which question is, we're going to anyways, right. do we use teacher? I mean, it sh is the word teacher the appropriate, like, is it staff? Like who, yeah. you know, yeah. can, you know, I guess I like, I mean, I like this language. I think, you know, we want kids to eat, obviously. I think it should be more than just a teacher though. Just, it could be so any I guess staff a, that's a in staff. there. Staff. I mean, should yeah. we just use the word staff? And so I don't know, I mean, if this happens, Jason, I guess the question is internally, would we follow up on the applicate? Like what would, Yes. Yeah, so what do you think would happen? So in, in prior to all of the, the free lunch, the universal free lunch, which we certainly hope will continue, um, we would do that. We had a, we had a list of, um, cause we keep track of all the charges, of course. So food service reaches out to families, um, and you know, obviously notifies them of any balances, but we also keep a master list of our free and reduced lunch applications each year. So they usually have a really good sense, unless of course it's a new student, but they have a really good sense year to year of who, who's eligible. Um, so we have supported uh, Maureen and her team in reaching out to families to just say, hey, get that application turned in. And, it, and once it's in, it eliminates any of the debt or reduces it based on if it's eligible for that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting piece of language because it's what, it's like kind of what you do anyway. Like you're going to feed a kid and you know, like regardless of where the application process is, it's really the next step from there. That's important, <laughs> which is in the next, <laughs> which is in the, the next, next policy. So this makes sense if we change it to teacher to staff. I'm just going to use this for a second. So, um, MASC, I, I mean, I think historically we have changed our policy at some point um, to ensure that, you know, students aren't being embarrassed by unpaid balances, that they're not eating soy butter. Sorry, Karen, I know you like it, but whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Sunflower. Butter, sunflower butter sandwiches butter. or whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've never eaten it. Every time it's I talk sunflower. about it, I'm like, I have no sunflower idea. Sunflower sandwich. Um, sun butter sandwich. Sun butter sandwich. That's what it is. Um, it, but MASC has um, recommended this language, which I think incorporates a lot of what we were trying to go for. I mean, it wasn't even we. I wasn't part of the we when it came, but You're Aaron right. was part of the we. No, it was right before I got here. Mm. I feel like I've been part of it. We tried a different route several years ago. It wasn't foolproof, but I like this. I mean, this base this says if that if they get to a negative balance, they can still continue to purchase a lunch, a regular lunch, not a a separate sandwich right and then the account will go negative but they cannot purchase a la carte items ice cream extra drinks um and that it's the parents responsibility to talk to us if there's a financial action and then and then what it further <coughs> says that it's up to the that the superintendent can investigate if there's a bigger issue and take further action as needed yeah. so I mean there was a point where we had some pretty harsh wording in here where we were holding diplomas so but we also right. had a, a very negative balance so I'm trying to find um, 
Does anybody, do you see anything about... This universal free lunch has been the, one of the best things that right. has come out of the yeah. pandemic. <laughs> I, I, well, we are meeting with the legislators on Tuesday yeah. to talk about their this legislative term and what our main priorities are. And, and one of the top three issues is ensuring universal mm -hmm. breakfast and lunch moving forward. This, uh, Worcester County superintendents have that meeting on Tuesday. It, it will be a great loss if they don't continue that yeah. program. Agreed. What were you... I'm just, I'm trying, I'm sorry, again, I'm struggling with how small this is, but um, the only question I had, and I don't remember seeing it in here, is just kind of what the guidance we would have for the conversation, like, you're, you know, this little kiddo is sitting in front of you with 3,000 kids behind him. Well, we wish we had 3,000 kids behind him, right? Um, and it's like, you know, Johnny, you have a $75 balance. Like, I don't want that to happen. Like, that shouldn't happen where kids have, have to defend their parents', parents rather, action. What It says parents rather than students will be contacted directly regarding unpaid charges. Okay. In that what, top, it's in the... The original okay. paragraph. Do you at the think top? that covers that? Like making sure if, lunch personnel know not to have that conversation. Yeah, and to to, okay. to Carrie's point, if you look at the paragraph two right above refunds, there is um, the point of sale system is designed to prevent direct identification of a student's meal status. Uh, so they like yeah. So I right think we the, were trying to figure right? out. Like I that. think at the end of the day, I don't think the the cashier running the system would even know any different. It's it's not going to say the they child's to. free, right? But our point of sale system can't say whether the child's free, reduced. So we'll make sure that it does. Okay. They wouldn't have that. Okay, that was the only piece that I couldn't remember. The child seeing. punches oh. the his or her or their code into the system. I do think their language kind of incorporated what our intent had been um, yeah. during our last go so. I agree with you, Tammy. That's the last thing we want is that. Die, that conversation that, yeah, it's just that should not happen. I agree. All right. So, with the exception of EEAA, EEAEC, I'm looking for a motion to approve policy manual section E. And I, uh, in the motion, we'll put hold EEAA, EEAEC. I'll make a motion, and if I could just say something after a second. Okay, motion made by Dan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ted. Any comments or questions? The the um, the the transportation and getting back to that real quick. So, the law says that it's. I think it's that we have to provide students with transportation, and I said, like I said, I sent it to you, but we don't get reimbursed for anything within a mile and a half. Of the district, so we have to do it, but it, there's not. They yeah, don't have it's, to reimburse. It's they don't like pertain to transportation. When the agreement they provides don't. for furnishing transportation by the regional school district, the regional school district shall be obligated to provide transportation for all the children in grades K through 12, and the Commonwealth shall reimburse the district to the full extent of the amounts. Um, however, that no reimbursement for the transportation between school and home should be made on account if. A pupil resides less than one and one half miles from the school, um, measured by a commonly traveled route. So that's that's where I, I remember this from a long time ago, and and so I, I think it's always been provided transportation for all the students in the district, but knowing that you only get reimbursement for the the ones that are over a mile and a half away. Thank you. So I just wanted Let's to still hold it for you to get clarification. Yeah, I just want I just want to find out why there's not separate language. Okay. That's okay. All, all right. So motion made by Dan and second by Ted. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You, uh, any abstentions? That's unanimous. Thank you. Good job, Tammy. Thank you for that. A lot of work. All right, moving on. We have MSBA school building uh, update. Sp school building committee members and update. <laughs> so I think we're going to talk about needing a school building committee. 
Um, and Carrie's going to give us an update because Tara. Yes. Yes. We met on February 1st to go over the timeline and when our 270 day window begins, which is June 1st. Um, the key is to not lose our momentum between now and June 1st. So we have some next steps that we're going to look at with, um, what's his name, Jason Tate? Mm, yeah. To work with us on the ethics on the whole ballot initiative and talk us through all of that through a webinar, I believe. Yeah. And we need to start getting out in front of some of the different PTOs, parent groups, all the different boosters clubs that we have so we can get that school building committee assembled. So we will have a good working group moving forward to make all those decisions. Um, a couple other things we need to get going with are touring other new high schools so we can see what is out there as well as getting some tours set up of BMR. So the public is aware of just the state that the building is in. Maybe putting together a video, possibly having some students narrate it. Um, I think a video is a fantastic mm -hmm. thing. And we can put it right on our YouTube channel. Um, I think that was. So you're going to be going out to those mentioned PTOs, et cetera, and soliciting school building members for members. our committee. School committee yeah. mm -hmm. members, building members. School <laughs> building committee. School building members. committee. We need to come up with a little we have all the right words. <laughs> school building. School building, yeah. School building school committee. School building building. Committee. Yeah. Okay. Mm, you just, and the just next meeting me? is March first. March first, yes. What a ballot initiative is. Well, we're going to need to get before MSBA will have to authorize us into their feasibility study, mm -hmm. which we will need to get positive town votes from both Blackstone and Millville. And our goal is to hopefully be on the November town meetings for that. Okay. I just asked the question because some people will be may confuse a ballot initiative as a town uh, an annual town election. No, so I just wanted to, yeah, at the time. So the typical process, like it, it would be a, on any other capital project with the towns and the school. And on March first, Jason Tate uh, from the ethics office um, for the state of Massachusetts will be joining us and doing a webinar um, to review as. Kerry was saying all of the kind of the ins and outs of a ballot initiative and going over all the ethics pieces to ensure we don't accidentally violate an ethics, you know, yeah, yeah, as yeah. it pertains to who can say what and copy what and send out what and not, you know. So we want to make sure that we. Have and that is there. a 6 p.m. meeting. Okay. Yes, it will it'll be virtual. Oh, yeah, he's he's going to do a webinar because he's would be coming from Boston. So it would be easier for him to do it. So that he's way, so. virtual and everybody else is meeting or we're going to do a virtual meet? meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Which we can still do. And so, yeah. uh, might I suggest or maybe did they did we move those meetings to the high school? Uh, they are moving forward. The last okay. one was here, but uh, all right. yeah. I knew that was talked about. So very good. Any other? I think that was it. So for anyone who was watching. We will be looking for people to join our school building committee. <laughs> school building committee. Very good. Any questions for Kerry? I guess one more question. So this, the, you have a subcommittee already. With, yes. So will that be part of the committee of your, or is that uh, going to be another? part of the conversation part to come. Of the conversation. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just curious. I'm just. Uh, the idea we were processing is do you, do we disband the capital planning committee and have it replaced by? Or do we keep both and have a school building? Um, now you have me saying <laughs> a school Sorry. building committee and a capital planning committee, and having two separate capital planning to work on more of the, you know, um, punch list. Yeah, the punch list of things that we need to tick off of that list, and then the school building committee would work on the new building project. But I, for the school committee to decide what direction they want to go. Okay. Did we get enough committees in there? <laughs> School building committees. Good, Dan? Thank you. I just All wanted right. to clarify All right, moving on, we have a request here for the class of 2023 School Committee Scholarship. Um, this money is already line-itemed in our budget, uh, but it is a request 
from the school for us we do have to um, yearly submit a form to them on whether we're still participating or not so just making sure um, everyone's aware of that that the money is line itemed and I will need a motion to approve the submission of the school committee scholarship which is one thousand dollars and is dispersed as two five hundred dollar scholarships um, awarded awarded at awards night. Exciting. I move to approve the um, <clears throat> two five hundred dollar BMR school committee scholarships. Okay, motion made by Tammy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Chuck. Any questions? Comments? Uh, nothing has changed with it. So. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. Would you like to have the committee to? Oh, you're filling it out already. Oh, I was just wondering, I didn't know if you wanted the scholarship committee to select the recipients. It's, it's pretty. I believe we typically criteria. have had the guide, the, them. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. We've had them do that. So, okay. um, one of the questions is would we would we prefer to have the BMR scholarship committee choose a recipient for us in the past we've answered yes anyone want to change that the yes. other alternative half, is half if the, the applicants would come to seniors us seniors and then we wouldn't even be able to vote on it anyway so <laughs> you're better off letting the scholarship <laughs> committee take it <laughs> are there any other questions that we have to answer no <laughs> you might see oh, really do do I have to? I have to sign. I don't know. No, you just need your email. I have it. I'll tell. I'll, I'll take care of it. Thanks. Perfect. All right. Next on the school committee items is uh, town meeting warrants. Um, though I don't know if we have the deadlines. Do we know them yet? Mm -mm, I'm not sure. We just they, wanted to start a discussion on uh, what warrants we might want to submit as a committee. Uh, we have a standing school committee stipend warrant um, that the language is usually the same every year. Basically, the towns approve the payment of our stipends based on the amount of meetings we attend, but maybe we took that language out, out on the meetings. So I'm honestly not sure. Uh, we have the Still new in. one for OPEB, which we've discussed in the past, um, which we did start last year do you want to talk a little bit about that how yeah sure it was we just um we'll have it separate i know last year separate. there was a lot of kind of back and forth conversation about uh where it belongs um and at the end of the day during our one of our workshops we can the school committee concluded that we would have it as a separate warrant um article on each of the towns uh, for the town meetings so we'll use the language um and Dan, I think we talked about that. We can put some language together yeah. and we'll make sure that they, it goes with the um, other warrant items. And that way it's clear on if that is being paid or it is not. And that's <coughs> the, it, the, like the, last year, Millville put it in their budget. Blackstone did a town meeting warrant. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think so we're going with the town meeting warrant. Town meeting warrant article is probably the only way to do it because it's going to, fluctuate from year to year even if like the, the committee and the towns agreed on like a two hundred thousand say cap for now for the time being that that number is going to change every year based on enrollment yeah uh, back and forth so <coughs> excuse me i have the um and i'll share it with you jason the it, and the rest of the committee is fine is the the warrant article the town of blackstone used to last okay. year it can be the same article for, for millville yeah. just a little bit of yeah. it's just a matter of changing the numbers and coming to the determination with the, the towns, maybe when we meet them on Monday night on where they want. But it, it becomes a stand, like Blackstone's, it's a standard article every year of funding. Correct. And Just like our stipends is standing. Early. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so then the other warrant we wanted to talk about was the possibility of a capital stabilization fund. Mm. Um, do you want to? Yeah, is it okay if yeah, I please say do. just a few things? About this? So uh, I think this. So for a few different reasons, this is a this is a very important 
one uh, to, to bring forward um, two main reasons. The first is, of course, we have, we hope to have a building project in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, and so to be able to set up a capital stabilization fund, to be able to support any work with that would be helpful. Um, but also running parallel, we know that when we had our capital study done, we got quite a bit of feedback in terms of short term uh, kind of projects that need to be done. Um, so being able to work to establish this would be, uh, I just think, very fiscally responsible uh, and smart for the district overall. I did have a conversation with Lynn Welch today from Unibank, uh, was it today or yesterday? Um, and she and I had a, had a good discussion about this. Uh, she shared with me that um, it makes so much sense for us to set this up. She said most of the regionals that she is working with, the Unibank is working with, has already, they've already done this, or they're in the process of doing it. Uh, so she said she's not surprised to hear us having that conversation. Uh, she actually um, is going to attend Monday night's joint meeting. She would like to speak to the communities about it. She thinks that it's a very fiscally sound uh, way to address some of the capital issues also on the town side. So um, she'll be joining us Monday evening at 7 o'clock. But um, I definitely think it's something that is, is worth, a, you know, a deeper discussion and hopefully get the support from the communities to do so. So we have this on here as act action required. Am I reading it right? Yeah, yeah. So, or, so we, we want to make, I, we need to, and if you're not ready to take action on it tonight, that's okay, but we had discussed Okay. The importance of taking the vote on these yeah. to shore up the warrant. I mean, I guess tonight we should decide as a committee, we could decide, it, not should, we could decide as a committee if these are the items that we would like to right. submit, right? And then you're saying she's coming Monday night to help talk to our towns about it. Um, here's the thing with warrants is... There's a deadline to get them on, but you can always strike them to take them off. So with that being said, I, um, we don't have a <coughs> deadline yet, but I know it's it's pretty early, and um, I think it's good that we're planning ahead as a committee. I do think it's also important for the to at least open up a conversation with our towns uh, about a capital stabilization fund. So... If we're all on the same page with that ahead of time, it would, you know, be a, a stronger presentation to them. And I, I can't imagine how they wouldn't see it as us trying to set this up for success. This project, it supports the towns. Um, you know, there might be conversation of, well, how do they have money to put into that? But we're supporting the towns by putting that money aside for any any needs that might come up so um i don't know anyone else have any thoughts on i i those? i'm gonna have uh so at least questions on this and i i do have concerns on this um where is the money coming from that's going to be put into the ca uh, ca uh, stabilization fund for uh, for this well, I believe any just like an E and D account, um, and that the committee that money is transferred in each year, and for anything to be spent out of there, it's a two thirds vote. Uh, the stabilization account of this magnitude would require that same type of management. Um, I think it would be a discussion of the committee on when to transfer money in in and that's obviously coming from our school budget it's not coming from we're not asking the town to right. deposit money into it if that's what you're so remember our school budget is made up of blackstone millville and state funds yeah. and many other revenues you know as far out as user fees and athletic mm -hmm. uh, athletic and music fees so um it's going to jump in on sure that? i mean i think at the end of the day if i would be curious to see and or hear 
from any municipal leader, which we are our own municipality, that budgets X amount of dollars for a fiscal year, and they end that fiscal year to the penny, right to the penny. Every single penny of it's accounted for. I'd love to see that if somebody's been able to do that. <laughs> um, an example to your question about where this might come from, we have situations where we might have like breakage savings, salary savings, <clears throat> where we may not be able to fill a paraprofessional position that we budgeted you know, $20,000 for or something. Or we may have a teacher retirement or resignation, sadly, but it happens in you know, September or October. Somebody leaves with a salary of 85000 and they are taking benefits. They're replaced by somebody with a salary of you know, 52000 with no benefits. Right? So those things happen all the time. When we do our budget, it's forecasting. I have made the joke about being a weatherman. Uh, though I hope I'm way better at it than a you know budget forecasting than a weatherman or weather person. Um, so at the end of the day, you know fiscal uh, fiscal year as it concludes, if you if we do it right and we have the past five years, frankly, um, we have ended the year with something left in our budget. That something is always rolled up into E and D. What I think I'm hearing you say, um, Aaron, is that as a school committee, you could make a decision to move something into a capital stabilization fund. For instance, let's say we finish a fiscal year and we're forecasted to finish with you know, $400,000 or something in the black. The school committee may decide, let's move 150000 or 200000 of that into our, capitalization, our capital stabilization fund. Right. Is that what you're saying? That is what I'm of, saying. Okay. That, that is, in my opinion, where money would come from and be put aside, earmarked specifically for capital, which we have a full binder on improvements needed, and we're obviously in the pipeline for a new, a new project, uh, which we know already the, we need money to be put forth for feasibility. feasibility. So to me, what this looks like is hopefully this stabilization account can be created by May. We're able to deposit money in there June 30th when our year ends. And when we go to our towns in November, as Carrie just stated, we're able to say to our towns, we need this for our feasibility, but by the way, we have 50% of the money set aside. And yes, it was from our operating budget in the past year, but we earmarked it for this. And that's relief to the towns to start the process. And that money is not just, it's not 70% from Blackstone, 30% from Millow. That is state funds, other revenues, and then the monies that do come in from each community. Um, so I think it's a start, but an important one. Tammy? Can I, I just want to make a clarifying point. Today's vote is not really about where the money comes from, et cetera. It's just about do we create it, and then at a later date, if money becomes available, then, then we would have a separate vote, a, a separate vote. <laughs> a separate vote on whether we move money or how we use that money. But today is just, we know that we have capital projects, they're, they're uh, you know, in abundance in our district. And so we're saying we should create this um, so we have some options of putting money aside for funding those so today is just really about, I mean, I, I know, Dan, where your question is coming from because you're thinking down the road, but for today is our only goal to say, do we need this? Do we feel like we need this? Do we want to be open right. to right. Right. <clears throat> All right, so I, I mean, I understand what, what you're, uh, Madam Chairman, what you're saying about the funding, I'm very familiar with where the funding comes to the district, and, and the bottom line is it's all taxpayer funded. The, the district is taxpayer funded, whether it be Blackstone, Millville, or the 
other taxpayers throughout the state of Massachusetts, which us as taxpayers of Blackstone and Millville are also funding other school districts through our taxation. And, and I get all that. <clears throat> the issue I, I, I have with this and, and is, and, I, and I'd like to know more about it because we have an E&D fund that's specific to certain rules and regulations that, you know, if we get to the 5%, the, the that 5% that has to go back to, um, <clears throat> back into the assessments of the town for the next school year as it, as it is, or reimbursed back to the towns directly. Creating a, a, <clears throat> a, 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 a um, stabilization fund for a school district, it only allows you to assess uh, up to 5% of each community's, each town's contribution to the school. Uh, so, where, say, for example, Millville's total school budget is $3 million and Black Zones is, say, $10 million. You, the money is allocated that way into a stabilization fund, okay? And, and if you're saying that the, for the last 50 years when the, the school district needed capital upgrades and things like that, they went to the towns through town meeting like we're going to do with this, with, with, this, with this proposal for a new school building and even the, the feasibility study. The towns then vote on, on, on that and, and, the, and the school district holds the note for the towns and the towns are required through their capital, their capital to, pay, to, to pay the district and the district pays um, through, the, through what it's getting from the towns um, their fair shares uh, on, e on, either, on either end. Um, so creating a stabilization fund that the, the funds, and that stabilization fund cannot exceed, that stabilization fund cannot exceed 5% of the assessed Millville portion and 5% of the assessed Blackstone portion combined. That's how a district stabilization fund would work. And so, and then it has to be reported back to the towns. And, and I, don't under, I, I don't understand, and, and, then, and then these contributions, okay, will be from the towns, so it's important where the funding comes from because it's coming from the towns. And that's right in the, in the law of a stabilization fund. So it's coming from the towns. And then it's the discretion, and I have no issue, but it's the discretion of a two-thirds vote of the school committee. So my question was, if you have a, a, a capital project that you wanted to fund at JFK, um, uh, Maloney, for example, and you're using that stabilization fund there, or, or the Millville Elementary School, you know, so it's got, there's a lot of discussion that needs to be had around this, and, and, but the towns have already been contributing to the capital projects, that's how we have everything to where we are now. And, and I look at this, and I don't think this school committee, uh, I'm not saying this on this school committee, because we're bringing it up and we're talking about it publicly, but in the future, this, be, this could potentially you know, this could be used on, because it's the school committee's discretion. So it could be, we need a new, which is nothing wrong with that. We have, what we, if we need to purchase something out of our excess and deficiency, we may purchase equipment and things like that. And that's what, it's, it's at the school committee's discretion. But now we're gonna go ask the towns to contribute into a stabilization fund after asking them to contribute to a project that they're gonna be paying for anyhow. I think there might be confusion around that. that, that I, as I understood what you were saying, Aaron, you, we're not asking the towns you for an to. additional contribution. No. For an additional, we want a place to be able to put some For an money additional in. contribution. Right. But I just want to, I, I don't want to get too far off track, but yeah. Dan, do you remember the sewer project when the high school was connected? Yes. There was, um, for some reason, before my time, but, and maybe you remember, um, but there was a large amount of money that came back to the district once they connected. And, if, and what, so when I got on this committee oh, 11 years ago, there was a sewer, there was E&D, 
and there was a sewer account. And that money was spent down for a few years while I was on. Um, at one point, I remember buying like something that was needed for a truck at one of the at the high school. And I never understood it 11 years ago. And, and I do now. Like, a lot of stuff has come full circle for me. Um, and the committee always authorized the use of that money. What I never understood is where that money came from until after the fact. Actually, it was a few years ago when Matt came to us and we needed to authorize to spend money out of E&D to fix one of the pumps on the sewer. We were not pumping out right of the high school. And we approved that to be repaired or, or purchased a new yeah, pub and out of E&D. But what I didn't know was that we didn't, that our budget went negative, Dan, to pay for that. We had, all, we had done the two thirds vote. That money doesn't come out of E&D until the end of the budget cycle. Right. So our budget had to absorb that. And we were always, Matt, why is this negative? Matt, why is this negative? So until that full cycle comes through, okay? So now you enter in a capital, a capital stabilization fund. Where would we have paid for that sewer pump from? Your, 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 your budget it, went it would negative, have been, but you had the money in the budget. You moved, you moved it. You, no, you we ended up using... a about $200,000 that year out of our E&D to cover several capital expenses. What, what am I talking about, three I, years I, I, or four yeah, years ago? Yes, it was, it was before three, COVID. Three yeah. I do remember that. So my whole point of this is it's absolutely necessary. And we have a building project um, coming. And I, I'm very appreciative that Lynn's going to be able yeah. to join us on Monday because it is my understanding and I could be wrong. So you're saying 5% Dan, our E&D can't be more than 5%. Of so the total budget. Of the total budget. Yeah. So I think I would love to hear from her yeah. on how this type of stabilization works um, and what the cap is for the regional district. Whether or not we have a building project or not, we have a book of needed repairs. And we would go, we would be able to use this before we went to the towns. Yes, in the past, for the past 50 years, that is what we've done. We go to the towns. We can't just fix it ourselves. And sometimes that's really hard. Sometimes that's really hard when you need a sewer pump. We never went to the towns for that. We need it. We we knew what we had to do, so. But you you, you just explained what the purpose of E and D is for. It's for it is for things. It's not for capital. Yes, it, it is. Isn't. It it actually, that could be it's, for it's, a. It's student in the definition in of E and D. It's it actually is for capital. It could be in a student if a student moves in. It could be many it things. Could be right. But E and D is for cap. It's it's in the definition of, of Can, of what it's being used for. But there are three. There are several types so we're allowed to have a, a student special yeah special education special stabilization, education stabilization e &D, capital. capital and E&D &D. we are allowed as a district to have all three of those we have one so um, the other thing that in my discussion with Lynn that she was really clear about uh, capital stabilization funds increases your bond rating and improves it so as we're as we're looking at going out to we hope borrow a fairly significant amount of money to do a new project, which the community desperately needs. I just walked to high school again, working on the video with Jesse, and it's just astonishing that we are dealing with some of the things in that high school, that the kids are dealing with them, frankly, that they are. But different conversation. Uh, but Lynn did share that it does strengthen your bond rating. I mean, so just so simply a, by having a yes. stabilization savings account. Right, yep. like uh, just another account with the money that would essentially have just been in E&D and just move some over and it betters it sh us. It shows a fiscal a responsibility of the municipality, um, which makes sense. And, you know, and again, and, you know, Lynn shared very pointedly, most regionals have this, so they're doing it. So it's... And again, this is just our vote if we want to put this as a warrant article. 
create a capital stabilization fund. The towns have both have to approve that. It's not something we can say we're creating one. You know, they have to approve approve it on the town floor. You know, asbestos last year. We went to the towns for that money. So. Now that would have been a use for the it, stabilization. It would have. Yeah, but if you had one set up, that actually should have been a Warren article, and it, and it should be again this year. This is the first time that it was ever um, that that we went to the town. The, the district went to the town for a capital repair, and 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 his every other list on that capital. Every other thing on that capital uh, assessed to the towns is through a warrant article. So that's, that's, that's the difference between doing it through warrant articles, and I think our regional agreement allows for two different ways. <clears throat> um, is one, like a capital project. We can do the regular, what we're doing right now, going through the process, the district, that's in, 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 our, in our agreement. Or there's another way where we could bypass going to the and then we can go right to a ballot. Um, if we wanted to say we wanted to say it was a hundred million dollars and we said, you know, we don't want to deal with the, the selectmen or this and that, whatever, for whatever reason or what have you, you could actually bring it directly to the ballot, to the people. We'd have, the, the, district, the district would have to create a, a, um, a question and then petition and it would, it would be on in the next annual town election. But those are the only two ways uh, that's provided in our agreement to um, uh, to uh, get approval on capital projects, other than our use of E and D, which allows it. It's just you have five percent, and 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 I'm not. This is what I know in my experience in the town. I'm not necessarily against it. These are my concerns, and I think it's <coughs> great that Lynn's coming in Monday night. Yeah. Because we can get a, a different exp uh, uh, an explanation that I'd like to learn more about this as well. Yeah, you can hear it right from the field. Yeah, yeah. and I'd like yeah. to, I I I just want to make sure that you know, and I have all the faith in the world in this this committee. But down the road, if there's something set up and 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 there's something, it's going to have to be watched closely because are we just going to use it for district-owned buildings? Um, that would be the fairest way to do it if we're using that assessment, and and maybe that's the idea. It's just for the district owned buildings or this like, like if it was a a a, 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 a huge lawnmower or, or a, a plow truck or something like that that would be only used on district property compared to you know stuff that because we don't do any maintenance or uh, on the field. Well, you know we don't maintain the the grounds on the town owned buildings. To, a, to an extent, I think we do, but so that's that. Those are some of the questions and concerns I would I would have moving forward. But it is when we petition the towns for these capital projects, that was how the region regional agreement was set up. So I, I just don't want to lose sight of that uh, because it has been essentially successful, you know, for for the for the duration of the district to this point. And I again, I don't remember. I don't know how that sewer account was set up, but I do know that no money could go into it. And as we spent it down and that it was closed out when the money was done. Mm. So with that being said, you keep saying, well, I feel comfortable with this committee or I, if, I mean, would it be different if we're establishing this for the purpose of our, of our impending building project? I mean, is that an option? I don't, that or, way it's or maybe, just for the district buildings maybe, or yeah and, and maybe what we can do because the idea of the action required um on this evening's agenda was essentially for the school committee to be able to say here are the uh, you know here are the articles we want to put forward and then we would start i would start working on you know i know dan you're gonna help me with this with some of the warrant language to hmm. make sure we get everything right um so, you know, you, at the end of the day, to your point, Aaron, we, you want to put the article forward, you can still strike it if you decide you don't want to do that. Um, we also could, you know, if, if you want to vote on some of the items and we, and we want to hold on one or something until we hear more from Lynn, 
you know, I think there's other opportunities in terms of making sure the committee feels comfortable with the direction we move forward and what the, with each of these. But I don't want to lose track of something else you said, Dan, I think that's important, was the asbestos removal piece of that. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we did have it on the capital assessment. Um, we didn't do a separate warrant article, um, but we certainly could. You know, and we could add that to this if that's something that, from a procedural place, it makes more sense to do it as a warrant item than it does as part of the capital assessment. The only thing I would say to that um, is when we are dealing with um, DLS, if if the town says we don't want to spend the money to encapsulate the asbestos, then DLS says, well, then you just don't open your building. <laughs> so I don't know if we want to. Can I, if I may, can I ask, like, so you you put it in the budget as a capital? It was, in, it was on the, so the capital um, budget that went, capital assessments that went to each town, mm -hmm. it was um, for the high school, the 75, 25-ish. Right, right, yeah, yeah. It went in one of the capital assessments. So it was very well <clears throat> marked, it was identified, and it was part of the, but there was not a separate warrant article on it. Right, so and, and so looking at that year over year over year, someone looking at that would say, okay, well this is a, four, the, all of these are all previous warrant articles that the towns are obligated to pay. They voted on it, that's why it's on the town's portion of the budget as capital on, on each t Blackstone and Millville. It's usually broken out separate from the, the actual operating budget of the school. Right. So that's why every every other capital item on there has been a town meeting vote. I would just want to ensure that there's there's no way for people that don't necessarily that are voting respectfully that don't necessarily understand the item to just say no. I I agree. Yeah, because we we have to do that. Yes, no, and I agree, and and that's and it's already been and moving. Forward. I don't think there's going to be an issue with that. To to. You know, to obviously there wasn't an issue with it before, and and you by the way, the school committee discussed it openly about the as, asbestos issues. Oh last sure, year. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't. No, it, I'm not saying it, it's just, it's just the procedure that we've followed for fifty some odd years, along with the agreement, and I just don't want to lose no, I, I get lose it. that. I just remember that discussion coming up uh, on the town side around the asbestos and us getting you know very unpleasant feedback. That, you know, we dropped the ball on this and this should have been dealt yeah, with in yeah, the 80s. Yeah, and, yeah. Right. I get it and you get it. Yeah. My worry is some of our, you know, our, our town residents that maybe don't have children in the system may not see the urgency around doing that. It's just a concern, you know, you're I laying get out. It. I, you know, I get it. Yeah. But. And again, if we had this type of account, it w this wouldn't even be a conversation. And it is six of one, half dozen the other. The town, it is still being paid for by the like you said or not because like i said our budget is funded by many other revenues so any money there's not going to be a new line item in our budget request to the towns for to fund a capital line that's not where this money is coming from so smart use of our our funds and as <coughs> duly noted I you don't come out at zero at the end of the year luckily we don't come out in the red there were a few years that I was seeing red but the money does need to go somewhere at that moment and what better than to plan for what we know we're forecasting in the future how long have we been asked for five-year plans and you know, and we are in the pipeline. So it's just, to me, that's it, the right time and the right place. But, I, I, uh, but I, as the committee sees fit, we can continue this conversation. We can, um, it's up to you guys. And we can amend it to put these. Yeah, I, I on look too. forward to hearing from, from Lynn on, that, on this and I can learn more, so. And she'll be with us Monday. Yes. With yeah. our towns, yeah. too. So that'll be great. At our joint meeting with... Any other comments from the committee? And how do... Does anyone have a suggestion on what we have in front of us? I'll make a motion to approve the... Uh, well, I'll make a motion 
to proceed on starting these warrant articles because we're still going to have to review them and then approve yeah. them before they get submitted to the town anyway. So we might as well see what they look like. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to write up the warrant articles for the items Herb's that we discussed. Committee stipends and capital stabilization. Yeah. Bond. Second. Okay, so motion made by Dan and second by Tammy. So any um, comments, concerns, other questions? So Tammy? I... Um, just thinking about what Dan is saying, or a portion of what Dan is saying is, and Dan, correct me if I'm not hearing some of your underlying concerns, but is there, when we're drafting the language, is there a way, because what I think I hear, let me start with this, Dan. When you're ta thinking about the capitalization, a, a capitalization fund, one of the fears is that you have you know, five years down the road, you end up with $300,000 in this account. And then suddenly, as we are sitting Blackstone members, something happens at Millville Elementary and we decide to use that $300,000 to fix that. Then in turn, we have now used 70% of Blackstone's money, 30% of Millville's money to fix a Millville building. So is that like one of this, is that like a scenario that you're thinking, am I oversimplifying it? No, you, you and, and so you're, yes, hypothetically, either way. Yes, yeah, sure, I just, I just used it one way. I mean, we happen to be Blackstone Either people, way, so. either way. Yeah, sure. And, and I'm not against getting something resolved and fixed at all. It's just that in order, and unless Lynn tells us something different, in order, the, the the stabilization account can't be more than five percent yeah. of the assessed sure. of Millville and the, so that's so it's listen if we did if this money was in going into the stabilization account it was E and it, it was E and D it's going from there to there I would imagine or going from a, some well, it might excess. not make it into E and D. I I think am I not correct so you have ten thousand dollars at the end of this. We make a, dis or a sitting school committee makes a decision. Do you put it in E and D or do you put it in, in stabilization right. in in this capital stabilization? So it doesn't go in E and D and then come back out to stabilization. We vote to put it in before it gets one or the other, D. right? I would assume. Okay. Yeah, well, but if we didn't have it, it would be going into E and D. So the point. Sure. So the point is that, and 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 so, and I, listen, I'm not. The E and D, I believe, I was a setup. The, the district should be able to use it as it sees fit for, throughout the district, and that's uh, this is something, and, and this is something a little different from that, and and I don't even like I'd like to just hear from Lynn because maybe she's going to shed some light on this that that this is how because uh, Dr. DeFalco said other districts have done it, and I want to uh, if I can listen, we can hear her out and how it was done, the sure. purpose it was used for. I think it'll bring us to a better understanding and the only reason I brought up this scenario is because I was going to ask if when they develop the language if they if we if it's possible to consider putting language in there that you you if there's something if there are monies in a capital stabilization fund if they can be just used for district owned property like so I guess my point am I so I'm asking that question like can it be that money just be used for district owned properties like can you put that language that's one question it doesn't have to be an answer right now yeah, Jason because we might want to drill into. we might get that information from Lynn when she talks about it yeah but I also am asking that because I'm thinking is that something Dan for for Dan as you're going through sort of your scenarios is would that alleviate some of your concern and, uh, and about that money being there right and and, and yes and the, my focus wasn't just on that it, sure. it, I think my bigger my bigger concern was taking the voice away from the communities that created the district because the the language for what you just that scenario is very easy the school district say like the and a Blackstone owned or a Millville owned building, the school district is 
um, responsible, if I remember correctly, for anything under 25,000, right? 20 or 25,000 in each. What is it? 20. 20, okay. And right now we fund that with no, no, no. everyone's money. Just that's so, what, you know. so that was my point. So I wouldn't, the, if we had a stabilization account, it would, for town owned buildings, it would fall under that same category. Anything under twenty thousand is yeah. still the district's cap. It's almost. still the district's purview. Yeah. So black zone on Mills, but anything over twenty five thousand would still follow the um, follow the regional agreement where the towns would have to pay for the their lease prospective of the buildings. buildings. Actually, yeah. So they would. So that would. That I wasn't too concerned about that because that would. The, the, if this were to pass, it's still it's under the district's purview, and so anything under twenty thousand, that's what we're doing right now with R E and D. Technically, if we had a, if we had an issue, um, that's a district's responsibility in one of those schools under in the, under the agreement, lease agreements, of the regional agreement, that the district would be paying out of pocket anyhow. So I have no issue with that. And anything over 20, 20 or twenty five, the towns would be going to town meeting to vote on that. That anyway, it's more or less the, you know, whatever that five percent is of the aggregate. Say if it's half of. Say if it's fifteen millions, it's it's seven hundred and fifty thousand that that could that account could go up to, with our current budget, you know, right now that would be a cap on that that that. So, um, I also can get these. I can Lynn's great. I can call yeah. her tomorrow. Yeah, she I can. can I can send a quick. Yeah, I can, I can shoot out a quick update yeah. to people tomorrow too. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a great question. I can get clarity around that yeah. too. Okay, so the motion on the table is. Um, to move forward. To move forward with crafting coming up language. with the warrants, crafting the language. Uh, any other questions? Did Can I ask one clarifying question? Of course. Sorry, I know we all want to move on from this. Uh, I just, what, and we're talking about the OPEB school committee stipends, capitalization, capital stabilization fund, and did we want to add asbestos to that? Or do we want to leave it we've in already the capital that. assessment already, as we've always done? This is our, that's already, this will be the second so, second year. Yeah. No, I I don't. I, I'd put a warrant article on that. No. I don't. I don't. What, so why would what we are you saying? It? But why? I mean, if that's the case, school committee stipends have been on there for put a warrant million article. years, right? Yeah, so, so are you saying you wouldn't do? Tell, can so you just clarify what you just said? We <laughs> we the asbestos in the high school became an issue a, a, a financial responsibility before last year's town meeting correct this is going yes. to be the second payment of yep so we've already p presented it in a way to our towns it's not new this isn't a new this is problem. The third year of this the, is yeah of the of the plan that we have to follow from DLS. it's not this isn't a new it's already part of our budget it's already part of the capital expenses am i saying that wrong it's been part of the capital expenses. No, Just like our middle school payment, it's on. That's it's on one of our payments I, that we, we have it laid out in your capital. Yeah. Have it. So it's why would we change the way we've presented that in the past? Shouldn't either towns? I have that right here. have right here. Pass that in the first two years of it, if that's. Say that again, Carrie. It's, it is listed there. They may Wouldn't it have come back to us from the town right that we needed to make it a warrant article? It's already when been we, part of the capital sure. assessment, capital budget gotcha. to okay, our town. Okay. So that yeah. would the, none of this is a separate warrant item. Middle the middle school payment is almost done. Middle school debt, sorry, roof projects. I just added. They're all on the that. same capital. Yeah. So, in order to be on that piece of paper, it requires a town meeting vote for both towns. So. In order to stay in compliance with the regional agreement, you're asking town the t you're asking the towns for funding for a capital project, which requires a town meeting a warrant article and a town meeting vote to get on that to get become a capital. Pro Didn't the towns a, decide when this became an expense that this is the way they wanted it? To, no, they wanted to pay they, for it. They don't decide that. The regional agreement dictates how that is even created and it has for 52 years but if it's already on there didn't Doesn't that matter. process it was a already mistake, happen it needs to be repaired so if you're asking for more money we're not I, the, why the money's already been asked for it's just been they're an installment. paying down this right it's been paid right, as so a this capital is the, expense. this is there you're not asking for more money we're not asking for any for, for asbestos yeah no 
it's part of the capital budget as it stands. So is the Millville boiler. So is the roof project. So is middle school debt. Those are all town meeting votes. Those we went through all MSBA and all the other stuff with all that stuff. So. The town is aware of their I don't think if, if we're, we're not asking for any additional and they agreed to that last year, then that's fine. But I thought we were going to go this for another round year. of funding because of it, more. It, it's too much. So it is a two hundred fifty thousand dollar request. So we're asking for more money in this year's capital. Yeah. So it needs to go. It needs to be a warrant article. The past th the past two years, it's been a different amount. I thought this just started last year. No, Two we're, years. we're in our third year of this. The third of a, of a multi-year plan. That was already approved by our towns. The plan was approved by the towns where, where and when? When the, the meeting? expense was brought to us, we brought it to our towns. We did. We had, we had a joint meeting. We reviewed it. Actually, we're in this room. Yeah. We reviewed it with everybody at the joint meeting. And then the plan, I mean, Matt was here. Yes. The plan was made that we were mitigating what we did last year when we did it, and then the rest was going to... And they to said it was a capital assess, uh, capital expense to put it in the capital. I'm only bringing it up because, Dan, you had mentioned that it, it, uh, earlier in our conversation that that should have been put here. Yes. So I'm just, that's the reason I brought and, it. And it. So if you're going back for more money on that... It, it, we're not... We're not. Well, yeah, you're, this, you're, add, you're assessing another 250000 that 000. this expense was coming when the first, when the ceiling tiles came down. The, Am I wrong? You can correct me. No, we knew that we had a three-year plan that we had to follow in order to encapsulate and mitigate the asbestos at the high school. Each year had a different action plan, and each action plan had a different amount to it. When we met with the... <laughs> joint meeting we reviewed year one two and three uh and with this everyone. is three <clears throat> this was the third year the the people that you met with in this room are not the legislative bodies of the two towns and i'll end it with that it requires a town meeting vote for any capital expenses in the blackstone millville regional school district it's in our old agreement it's in our new agreement and it's been like that it, it, so how did it get paid last year if I wasn't around for the last two years and on, on this so I it was I charged know. to the capital and they and and it was agreed upon that it was fine to put it in the capital budget there wasn't a formal vote here there wasn't yeah. a formal vote there wasn't here, a formal vote but by was there the, a formal the community. vote where it needed I'm to just, be I'm just thinking of the words that Dan was saying there wasn't a formal vote that said, yes, put it in capital. We don't need a separate warrant article. In discussions with the town governance and town administrators, it was decided that it would just go into capital because it's a capital expense. And we just left it. That, that's just how it was left. And have done it that way the past two years. So to Aaron's point about it, like this isn't new money. Aaron, it's, not right new, about, it's not a new, new issue. issue. You're 100% right about that. And with that being said, it's something that we've all, like, this has been a process. It's going to make it look like if, if you put a warrant on now in year three, you're making it look like it's new. So I, I just can't figure out where Dan's heading with that. I, I don't know what other way to say. It's required under the regional agreement. You're asking the towns for another $250,000. There's a process to do that. Maybe that process wasn't done right for the last couple of years, but it doesn't mean that you don't, once found Jason, out, you in don't our challenge, the challenge is with that. I hear, I don't disagree with what you're saying, Dan. The issue that I'm having with that is that was the process that everybody just agreed to. <laughs> so yeah. it's a, okay. But this the, year, this I, I year, hear you. I, I, we, I Blackstone what paid, a, already, already paid. From last year's town meetings, one hundred and seventy thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars, and Millville fifty-four thousand seven towards the specific. That's FY twenty-three. FY twenty-four, that capital payment is one eighty-three five twenty-five, and Millville sixty-three thousand four seventy-five. It there's a continuation here of of the three-year process. So how do you go backwards now and create a warrant Don't article? Don't go backwards. Plenty of articles have been amended and corrected, and mistakes have been made in the past. That, that's okay. To continue with it, knowing that it's not right, is not okay. 
in my opinion. So and, and can we get a like a legal opinion? Yeah, yeah. I can do that. And and then let's just move on. Sure. Yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. Thank you. I'll contact our legal counsel tomorrow. But I think it isn't it important to figure out if there actually. I mean, maybe there already was a vote. There's no vote on this. They voted to approve the capital, capital budget. Right. And that was in the capital budget. Well, and then two the, years ago. And then doesn't the capital committee of the towns then get recommended through the budget and budgeting process that gets approved on the town floor? Like, what am I missing, Dan? Yeah, so. If we already got capital approval, wouldn't the process naturally take us through the voting process? So this is how it works. So, so you meet, we meet with the Board of Selectmen, Finance Committee members of the capital outlay. We, you propose them and they all, to them, I'm assuming, and they all agree to it and say, yeah, that's the way we're going to go. Then that becomes a warrant article. It gets recommended by the Board of Selectmen or proposed to, by the school district, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, reviewed. The Capital Outlay Committee in Blackstone just gives recommendations right. for town meeting warrant articles. That's their job. Nothing else other than town meeting warrant articles. Yes or no, and then and, and the finance committee also gives a recommendation. Then it's proposed as a warrant article at town meeting. Millville has the same government. So that's, I'm just surprised Mr. Watson didn't pick up on it, that's all. Because he, he would have been the one to, and, and maybe I, and we can seek an opinion on that, but that is, and I could be wrong, and that's the way it's always been done, but maybe there was a loophole that was, that I, I wasn't, I was no longer uh, on the board of selectmen at the time when this, this started. Two years so, ago. Yeah, so I was. Okay. Oh, it would have been this time around. So I wasn't. I wasn't aware of it because it didn't come up as a warrant article, and I didn't follow the. Uh, I picked up on it last year after the Millville, after Mil the Millville town, uh, after the Millville voted on the budget. I saw that in the Blackstone budget, and I'm like. Where, where's the warrant? I looked for the warrant articles, and, and Millville had already passed it, so I didn't say anything. I wasn't on any board or committee back then. It was before I got on the school committee, and because it would have been to throw a wrench in it at that time, it, it just it was already approved. Get it through, and it was something that was necessary to be done to keep the school open as well. So I'm in full agreement with that. Okay, all those in favor of um, continuing the process of getting the language for our town meeting warrants as we discussed, OPEB, school committee stipends, and capital stabilization fund. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That's unanimous. And moving on to the report of this room. Thank you. Um, Good evening, everybody. <laughs> it's a little silly saying that two hours in. Um, but uh, just a few items on uh, my agenda tonight. First, I'd like to invite uh, Jill PG and Mary Colomino, our lead coach, to join us up front. And um, you might recall that we had some conversation about our um, um, CELUS, which is our social emotional learning indicator system. Uh, it is a mouthful. Um, and it's essentially a survey that is given to students, it's a self-assessment for them, uh, for our students to give us feedback, uh, you know, on essentially how they're doing. And we talk about the whole child, right? We have a lot of observations based on a lot of different factors that we see and hear in our relationships with our kids. But this is really powerful data because it comes right from them. And so um, Jill and Mary are going to talk a little bit about what our students told us about how they're doing. Do you want the clicker up there? No, because Tim is taking care of us. I just need to <laughs> let him know when to, to click ahead. Very good. All right. I already complained to him Thank about you the for clicker. Being here. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about Celis, but I just want you to know this was, um, I know our Mary, along with our um, current district social worker, have been leading this work and uh, working with the districts and the teams on this. Um, Sarah couldn't be here tonight, so 
I'm uh, Mary's partner in presentation, <laughs> so, and I've been involved with this as well as yes. along the way. So um, we have, we're going to review the results of the Social Emotional Learning system, Indicator System, and I'm going to refer to it as CELUS and Mary and I as we go along because it's just too long to say every time. Um, this CELUS survey was implemented as part of a grant um, that we wrote um, for social emotional and it was um, a DESI grant and it was focusing on integrating social emotional learning into academic learning okay again with the focus on the whole child okay Jeff uh, Tim you can go to the next slide see it's like magic um, You've seen this, I'm sure, over and over and over again, but the importance of adding this to a slide is, remember that one of our goals is the whole child. So again, and it's very interesting to note, I don't have to read this to you, I know you've seen it before, but as one of our goals, it was very interesting to see that our, our MCAS data and our STAR data actually align with what we found in CELUS. And it really gives us that connection between how our kids are feeling about themselves socially and emotionally with how they're achieving academically. So it really is really powerful information. Um, again, it's one piece with other things, but it's important to know that this really is focusing on the whole child for our students. So in, um, in, early, in early November, late October, um, 855 uh, of the students between JFK, the complex, and the, in the middle school and the high school participated in that. Um, and this was basically- Tim, you um, can click ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, missing a slide. That's okay. okay. They have it. Just keep going. All right. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so the eight, eight uh, 530 was the mean or average for the state. And um, this was what Jill already said, that this was based on the perceptions of the students on what, um, which in, on five competencies, which are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. And you'll notice there's a little chart here on the side. So this, the, Cel the CELUS survey is based on the CASEL frameworks, and the CASEL frameworks are social emotional areas. So those are the five areas, and you'll also notice in that little chart, it starts with that closest circle with what we do in our schools, and it goes out, I mean in our classrooms, then it goes out to our schools, and eventually it goes out further into our communities. So that's what that's showing there. And we're taking all that data, and you'll see on here, because not only are we looking at what the areas of opportunity, I mean they call them you know, areas of development, we always refer to our areas uh, as areas of opportunities, but we're also building on what we're finding for student strengths, and we do that across all the data that we use and that's actually the purpose when we when we when we um, attended the um, the informational pieces from Desi that they that's what they wanted to do that to, to look at the strengths and then to use those to support the the areas of where children need more mm -hmm. support and Tim you can go forward so the next section is, <coughs> Mary did mention the five areas, so these are the areas, and it breaks them down a little bit, and we did put um, a little uh, parenthesis there in identifying as SE, SM, because later when we get into the data, we abbreviated, because they're so long to write on in our charts. But if you look at those, these are the areas that the kids, again, looked at themselves and gave information about, and I don't have to read this all to you, but you see it goes into, the key words that you see in here is understanding emotions, managing one's emotions, understanding understanding perspective and empathizing, establish and maintaining healthy relationships, and making good and constructive decisions. Um, and again, all of these areas are focused on that, that whole child. The thing I want to refer to you before we move on to the data is in your packets, you have some colored sheets here, different colors. And for each of these colors, we thought it would be important to include that in there because these are each of the areas that are up on that chart. The self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making for each of these it kind of gives you a little chart to refer to that based on the student's score where their skills range and it goes from you know describing it as these skills are very hard for students all the way up to becoming you know um, very hard very hard hard easy 
and very easy. And it really shows you what we can expect in each of those. So we thought it was important to share that with you so you kind of get a sense of they're not just giving us scores and saying, yes, it's self-awareness. They're telling us what those mean. And that's been really helpful for us. So when you look at this, when we go through, remember, 530 is considered the mean that the state gave us. So the, and you will see when we go on, our kiddos actually are, in, in most cases, in a pretty good place. Um, but we wanted to share that with you so you get a little bit of a better understanding of what those mean. Okay, Tim, you can go on to the next slide. So as you can see by the graph that many of the students um, are in the developed or highly developed range and, and also that our district average is very close to the mean. And when, again, when we met with the DESI people to explain the data, they remarked that the data shows that, that our students in the district are in a good place. And I just add something to that. I think one of the things that's important to note in the school committee has been very supportive and helpful in helping us make sure that we're investing our resources into the right places. So additional counselors, social emotional learning curriculum, like second step um, that we're using, choose love, which I know is no cost of that, but we send people out for training. And um, so it, what we're seeing here, our advisory, which again isn't isn't perfect, but the high school's done a really nice job of really making that an engaging um, time for students, relationship building. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're seeing that overall. If you think about two years ago, we had you know over 25 students hospitalized for mental health issues. All four of them were on a radar; the other ones were not. Mm -hmm. um, I think our kids mm -hmm. have made an incredible recovery. Yeah. Um, we hear often from our colleagues um, just how dysregulated their kids are, their schools are, how out of control things are. Again, we are not perfect, mm -hmm. but that isn't us either. Like I think we've done a really, our kids have done an incredible job. Our staff have done an incredible job. And it's in what is so powerful to me <coughs> about this data, these aren't our perceptions of them. Mm -hmm. right. This is how they're rating themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is all anonymous, mm -hmm. um, and the participation rate is fantastic. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have, you know, over 830 kids taken. It was. Yeah. And this data, too, when you look at this, you know, this is seen by all different stakeholders across our school community. So it starts with like our leadership team, our central office leadership team. And the reason I mention that is we share this with everyone. So it's my assistant, Jen, who's part of these meetings. It's, you know, um, any, you know, our HR department. Mm -hmm. They're really also, data. yeah, we yeah. share all this Even with data. them too. Mm -hmm. yeah, Everything. Coming every and that's shared as well. Yeah. So, but if you look at this, you'll see at the bottom here that overall we are close with some, we, right. but we still have areas to work on. Right. So if you look at the next one, what we did is, again, the as teams, we looked at our overall um, areas of functioning, and then we kind of delved a little bit deeper, as we do with all data, whether it's MCAS, whether it's STAR, into the buildings. So if you look here, you'll see we have each of our buildings here. Um, we didn't have MES because they didn't participate. However, they do have next steps when we'll get into that because we all move forward together. Um, and you'll see how, again, the kids rated themselves across the board. Now with this data, now this is just one piece of data. Remember, we have some other things that we look at, you know, just that anecdotal information that we get. We get some choose love surveys. How are our elementary kids doing, um, you know, in their curriculum with the counselors? We also recently did the PHQ. That was our screener, risk screener that we did for our middle and high school. So all of that is also combined as well when we look at these scores. So based on this, um, Mary and Sarah had the opportunity to meet with the SEL teams in every building, and we also brought in our ILTs, our instructional leadership teams, because we want everyone to understand the work we do in SEL, it's not separate. It's part of what we do. We do data all the time for our academic achievement. This is just another piece of that, so everyone needs to be on board with that. So from this data, the teams got together, and they came up with, you look at the bottom, the identified areas of focus. So you'll see that there definitely are some themes running through here, through all of our buildings. But at BMR High School, I know they're going to be working on responsible decision making and social awareness. Now that doesn't mean they aren't touching upon the other areas, but these are two big areas of focus that they'll be coming up with action plans with. And we'll be sharing, you know, in general what those look like. Our middle school, again, same thing, responsible decision making and relationship <coughs> building. Um, the complex of our AFM and JFK students, responsible decision making does seem a little bit of a theme, and relationship building. And at MES, what they did is, again, 
although our students didn't take this survey, what um, Milva was able to do is again, they get some data based on the, um, the programs they roll out. I know um, Jason had mentioned we do Choose Love, we do Second Step, and again, anecdotal information. But what they also do, as we do with all data, is they take a look at what left them, the students that left them and went mm -hmm. to the complex. So there was discussions to take a look at what happened at the complex, how are the students rated themselves? Because that gives us great information, so what we should need to focus on when we're at Millville. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're gonna see that everyone has a plan moving forward and has an action plan. Because this you know, information what was really, it was great to see our kids were at, but what are those areas that we still need to work on? And for any of our students that might be tuning in and, and hearing that, Responsible decision making is an area that everybody needs to work. I would put, <laughs> I'd put us as adults in that yeah, category. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't feel bad. No. It's hard. Nope. It's hard. Right? Yep, it's absolutely it right. And is. sometimes that means that the kids just don't know what kind of decisions to make. That's why when you look at the, these colored sheets, it really delves into what that means. It's helpful. You know? Right. Yeah. And when yep. you do look at those rubrics, it also does show you that it's it's really not that off. Like, it, even, mm -hmm. even though it, it's below, it's, um, they're doing a great job. Yeah. And that's really what the state said as well. Like, they mm -hmm. really did. Yeah. Um, Tim, so you can go ahead. So for the next, uh, so we further uh, broke this down into other subgroups. And you can see that there are some areas of strength and um, in the blue that, you know, overall are, are the male population is, um, above the mean and um, and and also with self-management and looking at the non-binary and um, the students that identify as black as well that um, social awareness was a strength and that we do have some areas of opportunity and just to point out for example in in the L community of kids that um, for social awareness and and for responsible decision making that that we need to um, do some work with them. Um, and then, which yep. brings us into our next yep. step. Tim, you can go on to the next slide. So, like I said before, every one of our buildings has been working with the SEL team. They've rolled it out to their staff, the ILTs. These aren't complete. These are just some of the bullet points of some of the next steps and the action plans. Um, you know, in all the buildings. How are we rolling this out and how are we moving this forward? So there's been a lot of discussion around this. We had some opportunities to get some feedback from our principals and our teams right. to be able to share some points. So I'm just gonna start with JFK and AFM. And it says here that the MTSS, that's our multi-tiered system of supports. So there's a team at each building that really looks at, you know, the tiered levels of support for kiddos academically. And now we're making sure that we have all those tiers in place for kiddos for social emotional. So um, in, at the complex, they looked at, like I said, we look at a lot of data, and they specifically said we looked at attendance, we looked at achievement, we looked at those students that are identified. Oh, that's one thing we forgot to mention. Just so you're aware, besides mentioning the whole schools, the teams had an opportunity to go into the program and look at individual students as well. So that's helpful. So by saying individual students, every building had the opportunity to go in and take a look at the kiddos um, and make sure that we you know, had those numbers and they kind of weren't hidden in there. No one fell through the cracks. Um, so some of the things that they're gonna be doing, they do use Choose Love and they're gonna make sure that, because right now it's uh, at the elementary school levels, our counselors go into the classroom and they teach gu like guidance lessons using Choose Love and Second Step. They wanna make that available also for our teachers. And our grade level teams, they're looking at a staff establishing a structure to be able to do that in the classrooms on a more you know regular basis, not just during counseling. So we're generalizing those skills. They're also looking at our counters complete, um, completing like that one pager. Like where, where are those go-to toolboxes for the teachers to be able to use in the classroom when things crop up? And again, they're gonna be focusing more on the decision-making, responsible relationships. And they're also gonna be expanding their champions program. Does everyone remember what the champions program was? Mm -hmm. So they are looking to extend that more. Teachers are really enjoying it. Again, they're volunteering their time one-to-one -to, -one to connect with those kiddos, to do whatever, play basketball, have a snack, play a game. So they're looking to expand <coughs> that as well. Um, Can I add to that, Jill? Because yep. the other schools are also following that lead. We, right. we had a lot of conversations as a leadership team looking at um, the behavioral outcomes, um, not necessarily our own, but yes, part of our own too, and, and situations in the classroom. And, um, you know, relationships are half the battle. And so one of the things that we talked about as a leadership team is 
which again is our principal assistant principals, uh, you know, there's three of us um, that, you know, if, if we're really going to get to impacting the, like the sales data and frankly the learning data, all of it, we really need to look at the relationships between the adults and the students. Um, and it is to no surprise probably any of us sitting around here, the schools that are performing better and doing better on all indicators have better relationships between teachers and students. They just do. And so uh, one of the things that the principals are doing with their staff is going through an exercise of here are all the students that are in your care, right, whether it's 100 because you're at the secondary level, or whether it's 20, list everything you know about this kid, not mm -hmm. physical features. Tell me every single thing you know about the student. Mm -hmm. And then what they're doing is huddling up and looking at the students that the adults really don't know a lot about. Mm -hmm. Because that in itself is a huge indicator mm -hmm. as to why there's a lack of relationship there. And these are the students that we need to really be working with, not to say we don't work with the other ones, but to try to build some bridges and develop some healthy relationships to help really lift up. So actually that was a good segue for me because um, <coughs> that's what's happening. That's going to happen at the uh, staff meeting at the middle school on um, next week. And uh, all of the schools, I, um, Sarah and I have been to all of the staff meetings when they have started to roll this out and how they're going to roll it out. So the last one will be the middle school next week. And that's one of the activities that they're going to be doing with the staff. Um, and also, they are going to be trying to restructure and reprioritize their, um, their second step. They feel like... Uh, uh, some of the, t they're just going to do a little bit of more education with some of the staff to do, uh, to do that a little bit better during advisory time. And then another supplemental program that they're going to be looking at. Um, one of the things that they're, uh, that I, they're going to be putting, implementing a peer media mediation and conflict resolution. They're going to be working with that to introduce that program. Um, it isn't on here, but I do know that this is happening as well, that um, there's going to be, if I move down to, to the high school, they're working right now with um, ADL, AD, ADL training and, and uh, training peers, 29 kids. Um, they're all, they're all, all those kids are actually going to be going to the middle school as well to act as mediators to the middle school, which is a really great connection. and. Um, so, and also at the high school, there'll be, a, there's a group of, of seniors that I also think is a great idea to act um, as advisory men, um, mentors to all the uh, ninth grade advisories. So, um, building relationships with, um, with, with, with staff and faculty, but also with one another. They're also going to Millville to read to them next week. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. And speaking of Millville, our final school and their little action plan. Um, so they're looking at building that toolbox. And I know some of the other um, buildings were doing that. But again, with those strategies for not only the teachers, but our littlest learners. What are some of those skills and strategies that are kind of their go-tos in the classroom? One of the things they also wanted to focus on the kids is self-reading. So understanding themselves and how they're feeling in an experience or in an activity. So they're going to really focus on that to do things like maybe after a special, was this hard? Was this easy you know so they can do that putting a visual on their desk if they're experiencing some challenges with a you know an assignment how do they do that they're also going to be doing you know some morning meetings that really focus on some of this SEL work um, we're also going to make sure so we have um, world of wonders that is part of our wonders program for our youngest learners our preschool students so they're going to be looking at making sure that that aligns with some of the SEL type of strategies we're going to be doing there so we need to start very young so we can just keep continue to move that up um, and and what they're also doing is they are continuing to look at their needs. They have identified the areas, but like I said, at Millville, they're you know constantly looking at that everyday data, that anecdotal data, the choose love, to make sure they're moving forward with the district as well, even though they didn't take that solace. They know their kids really well, um, so they are able to put these plans and actions, actions too. And they will be taking this survey again mm -hmm. in March. Yes. The same group of students same did the group first of time. Yes. And to put some context, so this was this was built on, as Jill mentioned, the Castle framework. Castle yes. framework is just like 
if you think about the Massachusetts state framework mm -hmm. for mathematics, right? Here are all the standards the kids need to learn. CASEL is the same thing, it's an acronym, and it's just the social emotional standards for kids. Like, here's what we want students right. to be able to know and do in these different domains. And our it's programs are based on that. Our Choose yep. Love program is based in CASEL, and our second step. They're, they all use that, that framework. Mm -hmm. When did they do this first round? In the, uh, late October, early okay. November. So mm -hmm. October to March. Yes. Yep. Okay. This was new for us, so. Like it's nice, though. It. It's yeah. nice to see this side of things. You know, mm -hmm. we're not looking at stars, and it, mm -hmm. this is important too. Oh so yes, because yeah. it is. So. It's truly all connected. Seriously, yes. if you had a little graph and you lined it up, you could actually pick out my, like this is where the kids are and this is where their achievement is. It really was a great connection. And as sure as I'm sitting here, the students who are scoring mm -hmm. lower on these indicators, who are scoring lower on STAR and MCAS, I guarantee you <coughs> will show up on that list mm -hmm. that teachers know very little about oh, as far as the kids in their classrooms. I'm guaranteeing you'll be able to triangulate yeah. that. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it really does. It comes down to those relationships. And I met with, <clears throat> I, I recorded the next um, Charger Nation podcast today with the winter captains and music uh, captains. And uh, it was one of the things one of the students said to me, is we talked about like get, getting kids involved and, you know, things outside the classroom. And she said, and I asked her, I said, what can I do? What can we do better as adults? She said, you need to encourage us more. Mm -hmm. We need more encouragement. Mm -hmm. And it was right from one of our seniors. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, that's pretty telling. And, yes. you know, not, not, a, not astounding piece of feedback, you wouldn't, right? But it's almost like, you know, hey, adults, slow down for a minute and remember about us. And that's why we're doing this. And please encourage us to do things and support us in those things. And it was a, a simple but, a, but powerful message. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I just on the student group slide, these um, this includes <coughs> all of all of the students in the district under these categories. Yes. Yes. Okay. All the students. I always that get to the, the point where I wonder, like, is this one student, and is this five so students, is this ten students? It's all the students like that took the, the took test, the, took the survey. So, yes. you, so there are some. I mean, the survey. There are some students that did that opted out. Mm -hmm. But in grades three through twelve, everyone we had eight hundred and thirty. Yes. Yeah, something. Right. And I think um, at the complex, it was a hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're wanting to break down there, JFK is third grade. Mm -hmm. And then AFM is fourth and fifth. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering, like, what, what's the breakup there? Yeah. It's, yeah. That's how they did it. I just, especially, um, you know, I, when you see these specialized groups, it's always like, are we, are we trying to get four kids in a better place, or are we trying to get twenty-five? Like, I, that's. It, and it I always, I always yeah. like. Mm -hmm. It like depends to on dig the a little deeper in the weeds it, yeah, when I think it, about so the numbers. So we do dig deeper, but think about we also have tiered intervention. So even if it is four, those four may stick. You know, they may not be able to be addressed in that tier one. They may need to be moved to tier two or tier three. That's mm -hmm. the reason for the tiers. The smaller the you know might need more intervention. Mm -hmm. But yes, everyone who took it is on here, and we didn't have mm -hmm. a huge population of students that no that opted. No, out. there were. It was a lot of people. A lot of kids took it. Yeah. Well, and. And kids on this slide could be in several columns. You could be. Yeah, maybe EL. Yes, you're right. You, yeah, they I mean, yes. they definitely are, right? Yeah, they're absolutely. EL. They can yeah. be male. They can be non-binary. And non that's what's, what's good right. about it is you're they right. can go in and individually look, and they have in their buildings mm -hmm. to see where individual kiddos come up as yeah. well. Okay. So it's a great point, Tammy. But yes, yeah. we're able to go in and look at those students. Because you're right. These yes. categories could include more than mm -hmm. one. Right. So the areas of, of low, yep. again, if you're targeting, when you're going through individually and there's like five kids mm -hmm. who are like your red of uh, your triangle, when you mm -hmm. do the triangle model, you're really going to be able to raise scores in potentially five of these columns. Right, and we could. you can just yeah. look at Absolutely. the student too. You can just pull the individual student out as well. And all of the right. schools have those, they have the, like the individual student data. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks for doing this work. It is important. It does matter. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, I can move through these other items fairly quickly. Um, in your packet, you have a updated district organizational chart. Um, speaking of our students, you know that our students are at the top of our chart. Most districts have them at the bottom and the school committee at the top. Ours is reversed. Uh, we are all at the bottom because it is our job to hold up the kids. So um, we did have to make a couple of changes to our org chart. And really the, the, the biggest one is really just changing the title around uh, for the director of uh, finance and operations that was the assistant superintendent role um, and you'll notice that the director of learner support services um, is where that assistant superintendent kind of box sat uh, and I will say not to embarrass Jill because she's in the room but uh, this district would be big big trouble without her so uh, Jill is super grateful for everything you're doing uh, and really is the second in charge so if you know, if I'm not here or there's something that comes up, Jill is definitely the go-to. Kind of by default, it's just the two of us. <laughs> but from that perspective, but um, we'd definitely be in big trouble without her. So um, we have just an updated org chart uh, with the title from the assistant soup to director of finance and operations, and then just a, a moving around of the organizational structure of kind of the, the command, if you will, of the day-to-day -day operations. So this is actually required. We're going to yep. approve this, and yep. it, th there is one. It goes on our website. Yep, this, right? will, this will replace the other one. All right, so looking for a motion to approve the updated district's organizational chart. So moved. Second. Motion made by Dan, second by Tammy. Any questions or discussion for Jason? All those in favor of the of approving the organizational chart as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, update on our director of finance and operations position. Um, we continue to recruit. We continue to interview. Uh, we continue to move candidates through the, uh, the process um, of screening, interviewing with central office teams. Um, our last candidate, we did put through a pretty challenging simulation where we gave the candidate um, our audit findings and nothing else and said, write up a response to these findings. Uh, we wanted to test the technical skills of the individual. Um, we are giving individuals scenarios on um, issues of inclusivity and, and you know how do we address issues of high expectations and asking them to really work through those. Um, we are definitely um, not landing where we want to with our candidates. Um, we have since reposted. I know Jill recently as today was reaching out to do a screening. Um, and so what we are bringing forward as a consideration, and we don't necessarily need to make a decision on this right now, um, but um, there are search firms that help with these things and trying to fill some of these positions. NESDEC is one of them. Um, there are various levels of search, searching, if you will, that they do to help find and land candidates. Um, the sample proposal in your packet is just one. This is the lowest kind of entry level. Um, the cost for all of this is $4,650. Um, and it's basically a lot of, um, for lack of a better term, kind of door knocking. They have lists um, and candidates that are available to them. Um, so they do a lot of, you know, advertising for the district. They put together a really nice brochure and send it out um, to prospective candidates. Um, but there is no guarantee that we will have a slate of candidates. Um, there are other levels of this recruitment that are, are far more expensive, um, the highest being upwards of $20,000, where they do guarantee a slate. They will bring forward candidates. Um, doesn't mean that we are going to like any of them or they're going to be a good fit for us. Um, but I wanted to put it forward just because at the end of the day, we're, we are having a very difficult time filling this position. Um, I know Tammy and Aaron have both met with uh, different candidates. Uh, Aaron, you interviewed 
most recently the last one and had some concerns as well um, as the team. And you guys, I, I think I know the committee knows we don't do the warm body thing. Like we're not just going to put someone in there. So um, we continue our search. But I wanted to present this as at least a discussion point to see if it's something the committee is interesting in pursuing in terms of trying to put um, <coughs> in our reach. But again, there's no guarantees. Mm -hmm. That's the that. part I don't like about it, is the no guarantee. We, we used NESDEC in the past for another position, and it, but there was a guarantee attached to it that we would have a... Oh, wait. I'll ask a quick question. I see the 30 days on, on a couple of these, but for the most part, uh, once we you know, solicit the services, is it until we find somebody, or is it uh, a timetable kind of? So it's interesting because it, so this is this reads super formal, right? And 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 it should, but like Art has been doing this for so long. Art and he's, Benton Fort yeah. was who came to us, um, and I can tell you that when we used their service before, it was ten thousand um, dollars with a guarantee. Yeah. Okay. For the position we were seeking at the time. But they're usually very available, okay. you know, to, to, to the um, individuals they're working with. It's, it's a really hard position to fill. I just feel like what you're bringing us right here is what we've, you've already done. You've mm -hmm. already done that. It's like, but this puts some fluff on it because it has Nesdik's name yep. for $4,600. They're going to make it look nicer. Like, <laughs> what's the next? Yeah. So, what is the next? It's around ten thousand. And what does that give us? They do more of um, collect resumes. We'll do screenings and some interviews, and they do more of like the like the in the weed stuff that we're doing right now. Do they bring us a can any candidates? Um, they do help put together um, like a, a slate, a list of individuals to to work with. Um, I know inflation has happened and it's been many years, but when we paid ten thousand dollars last time, it's more than that now. Yeah, to, I, to, get, I, to, I, to <laughs> get to that level, they yeah. they set up the interviews. They brought us the people. They yeah. we got organized packets of wow. the applicants. I, I know it's been a while, but it's something to think about. You know, at this stage, we keep recruiting. We are we are trying to recruit internally. We are trying to recruit. Externally, we're looking at different positions within the district that would be easier to fill than this one and maybe move some. I mean, at the end of the day, whoever goes in this seat, unless they're a sitting finance director, which the likelihood of that is going to be very slim, uh, we're a small system. And so, um, you know, we're, we're not going to get a candidate that's going to leave a 5,000 student district to a 1,500 student district for a bunch of different reasons. Um, so, the candidates we have been working with are either trying to get into education and they're accountants, they've been working, you know, either uh, on the municipal side uh, or on the state government side, um, or they've been in a very small, like K to eight district, uh, not in Massachusetts. So I only share those as examples. Those are truly people we've been speaking with and working with. They're all going to need like significant mentoring uh, because the Massachusetts structure is different. And regional is a completely different animal than being a, a business manager uh, in a single municipal school district, uh, as everyone in, you know certainly knows around this table. Uh, there's all the treasury that comes with it, um, the warrant, <laughs> the warrant article conversations that you know are a little bit different. So there's just there's a lot to learn, and the uh, Massachusetts Association of Business uh, Business Officials they don't run courses anymore. They stopped doing that in COVID. So like, there's not even a pathway for these folks to go down any longer. Um, but we've tried, we've advertised with them, we've advertised with the Superintendent Association. I've reached out to colleagues in larger urbans that have like, you know, many, many assistants to see if we could pull an assistant from them, you know, or maybe they knew someone that was looking to move up from an assistant level and the, we're just striking out everywhere. And now we're up against um, districts like Cumberland that are looking, districts like Lincoln. Uh, Acton Boxborough, Shrewsbury, that's paying $185,000. Um, we've got serious competition 
Um, but Bico, that, I wouldn't even consider that competition. But like, Bico, can't Bico with our, that. our collaborative is hiring a new director of finance and operations. So I mean, we just they should. what salary are they starting? Sure. Is that what you said? Yeah. What? We have fixed those issues. Share them. <laughs> I thought she said you sh they should. As they <laughs> should, if yes. they were oh, what oh, yes. mismanaged Sorry. previously. For who? Which one? Bico. Uh, I think it's one. I think it was one fifteen. So I guess maybe this conversation needs to. Do we need to talk about this once again? And are, are we looking for the right, you know, is this, it doesn't sound like we're going to find a director of finance and operations. So what does that look like? What What is next? Well, I are you what saying like forever? peer this, <laughs> are, are you saying peer right down now? lower? Like, I what keep are you, asking, what are you asking? asking. I don't know. Do we need an I mean, accountant or do we need a... I mean, just an <coughs> accountant? I mean, is that that's not enough to run a school, right? I mean, an accountant? Yeah. What is your next idea? <laughs> I think we just keep giving Jason encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, so we're, we are still doing some recruitment and trying to reach out to some additional candidates. Um, you know, I wanted to bring this forward as something. I, I, Do you want to try this? I'm not, I don't know. I don't know that this is the right way to go either, but I, but I do feel that doing the same thing over and over again is getting a, it, we're going to be in the same place. Yeah. Like, if we have to do something different. I think we're trying to figure out what that what is because okay. the recruitment isn't working. There's, if I may, there's a next step on that. They narrow it down to six or seven can candidates. The next, like the next. Uh, yes, there is another higher. tier of that that's yeah, more expensive. That's around the 10,000. It's more than that, but it's a little bit more than that. But they they kind of vet a lot of it and bring to the district several qualified candidates. They try. They try, yes. Yeah. Is there another company? Our, is there our company? worry is just that. The, like the, where the candidates aren't there. Yeah. That's the big concern that we, or, or they're going to bring forward to us, f you know, friends that we've already seen yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, ah, right. that's what we're kind of haggling right. over. Is it when, worth When we used it before, it was truly to narrow down, not to, and, yeah. and, and not to, to find. Right. And, it, and with what Jason's saying, is what are they really going to bring us? Well, I think Jason has now. narrowed it down several times with Jill. Right. And it's just because they're guaranteeing you candidates doesn't <coughs> mean it's the paperwork and the organization piece. And he's already. Yeah, this is too good. important to mm -hmm. not have the right. This is our money. Like, yeah. This is, we just, you know, talked for an hour and a half about, you know, right? Like, like yeah. that's what's so important. I mean, you have to get that right. So I just wanted to give an update on that. You know, I, I will you. continue to keep everybody posted. We're going to keep vetting and recruiting. And I mean, we're emailing people that are sitting in these positions in other districts saying, hey, are you interested in having a conversation? <laughs> you know. Is there anything else in the interim that we, I mean, I don't know if it's like, is there some position, person in the interim? I mean, I know we tried an interim here. Mm. <laughs> Um, but like, is there anything that we can take off, you know, that we can have a position that takes something off your plate and not saying that, we, you know, you're not the business, you're not, you're not intended to be our business manager. We, un, you know, totally yeah, understand that. But in the interim of finding a business manager, now you're doing superintendent things and business manager things. And But the work like, is mostly is there, done right now, right? I've, I've actually been checking, checking yeah. in with him. Right. But I mean, is there it? something we should... You well, know, I think consider. It, I mean, I think what the committee did do that was super helpful for all of us because there's a team of us that's pulling this. Was that um, accounts receivable person that you all approved? Like that was a huge help. Like that made a really big difference because that helped out other folks in the finance office that could then help Jill and I do the day-to-day -day budget stuff. So that was actually and getting the the numbers in the That's systems right. and stuff. Right? Yeah. So that that just a big kudos to all of you for helping with that because that was a big that was a big. Well, let us know if there's another yeah. need due to this shortage, and we'll support you. Yeah. Just and I want just want you know we're working on this very hard. Like the entire team is. We keep vetting and recruiting, and but we're just not. Not coming up with much, but we will keep at it. And if I think this is the next step, we'll definitely bring it back. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you mind 
if we go to the last item on our agenda that is action required, and then you can skip back to you because I actually need to step out. But when I step out, we won't have a quorum anymore. Um, so I just don't want to get the use of facilities. Um, um, and then you can go back to your budget update if you don't mind. No, I don't mind that. Oh, sorry. So facilities, we have, um, I think, three requests. Yes. One three from the PTO. <coughs> one from our Irish Dance Academy, the Green, yes. Green Glory Academy of Irish Dance. And as always, and these are already verified on the calendar. And Okay. So, just looking for a motion for the four presented use of facility requests. Motion approved. Okay, second. Motion made by Dan. Second by Kerry. I assume the Irish Wait. dance isn't retroactive. They're not. Uh, they're not really looking to go back to June tenth, twenty twenty two. Right. Right. Yeah. Or the February. Well, paper. this is February approved. Oh, February seventh, and we're on the ninth. So I guess you know it is what it is. Did they already get to use it, PTO? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I believe so, actually. Just ask it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, I noticed that. Unanimous. Well, us, thank you for yeah. managing this, Scott and Jason, the use of facilities. We get these things like, oh, yeah, we did this last night. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for managing it. Our PTO, you got to love them. Um, We're so need them. I do apologize. <laughs> I'm going to step out. Oh, boy. It's um, late for me to remember any So we're, we're just, Jason's going to go back to his budget. Mm -hmm. and oh, oh, wait, it's Blackstone Council on Aging. Do we already do that? Yes, that was four. Oh, that was, oh, we had yeah, four? Oh, okay. That was And I will see everybody Monday. Bye. Bye. Sorry. Um, just quickly underneath my report, uh, the budget update, there's not a lot to discuss here. In your packet, you have the final um uh, draft as it stands uh, from February 6th, which was our last workshop. Um, and that does have the 3.4% increase at the bottom. I will say what we're doing now in the meantime, because um, we're all, it's funny, I had some conversations with the, the municip municipal side and the budgeting, and we're all kind of in the same boat. Like we're just waiting for the governor to release our numbers. Um, but in the meantime, what we are doing as a district is we're trying to identify offsets and revenue streams because uh, that's kind of the other part. So what Jill and I have started the process of now is if you see that 3.4% increase is about a $926,000 increase. Uh, again, that's before school choice and, and charter tuition. We don't know what those are until we get the governor's numbers. But we're looking to try and find offsets to that now. So how can we work uh, to, to absorb as much of that 926000 as we can. Um, that's going to all be part of the offsets to the community. So, like, we're looking, for instance, things like late buses. Is there a way we can try to eke out some ESSER money to pick up some of the late busing that we have for after-school programs uh, for next year so it comes out of the local budget? We don't have to assess. We can absorb some of that. So we're trying to find things like that. Uh, while we're waiting to find out what the governor's numbers are going to be. Um, so we're very hopeful that as we start looking at revenue streams like that, like Circuit Breaker, uh, like E&D, um, you know, use, that we'll be able to offset that 3.4% even more. Because, again, we don't know what the minimum local contributions are going to be. So just so the school committee is aware you know we're not just sitting kind of on our hands and waiting like we are trying to figure out how do we now work to minimize that that number by offsetting it with different revenues um, and I know we've been through this at length but I didn't know if there was any questions anyone had on that that these were the numbers we discussed at our workshop Monday and now we are Um, Tammy, is it okay to move on to the? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so to the business office report, just briefly, um, in your packet you have the expenditure and revenue update. Um, there are no significant changes 
there. Uh, we are still uh, running a strong, healthy bottom line. If you look at the um, backside, so page two, uh, you can see where we are projected out uh, by the end of this fiscal year. If you look at the column all the way, uh, the second column to the right that says budget balance, and you go to the bottom, uh, you'll see the 1.2. Um, but if you look just above that, the two lines directly above, payments to collaborative and pay, uh, programs, non-public school, those are private tuitions, that's where that savings is really coming from. Um, the rest of the budget is more or less balancing itself out. Uh, we know that once we get our technology reimbursement from the federal government, that that tech line will go back up 250000 um, but if you look at the uh, savings from payments to collaborative and programs and non-public schools, that's really where that money is. And that's just for a matter of students either withdrawing or not showing or aging out or moving or, yeah, or coming back to the district. <coughs> um, so that's where things stand at this point. Are there any questions on the expenditure side and the revenue side, which is the top part on page one. I know we see this report every month. But. And again, just as a reminder, we don't generate this report until we I approve all the final requisitions, turn in on purchase orders, Tina cuts the checks, and then you have them in warrants. So these are literally the updated numbers as of Tuesday. We make sure that the warrants are, are always cut and set before we generate the updated report. Any questions here? Uh, moving on to our personnel uh, report. That's just to be received and placed on file, but you can see we um, had three new appointments, um, all substitutes, uh, two cafeteria workers and one teacher. And then we had one resignation in Unit C, who's a paraprofessional. We have one retirement in Unit C, uh, also a paraprofessional. And then we had two resignations. Uh, one was a permanent sub. And then, uh, unfortunately, our district social worker is leaving. Uh, she gave her 90-day notice. So we have posted for a district social worker. And again, that's a 12-month uh, full-time position. So we're in the midst of recruiting for that as well. It's the business office report. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to facilities. Good evening. So um, at the high school, our industrial oh. burner detected a faulty transformer on boiler number one. Boiler continues to trip off. It is runnable. I just don't trust it. Um, I wouldn't leave it alone. We run it during the day just to keep it circulating and stuff, but we shut it off at nighttime. Total pots and labor is $1,000, so we told them to go ahead and order the pots. Um, they're very busy this week with broken pipes and so on. I don't know why, but... <laughs> uh, the heat and coil that is located in the teacher workroom, they want $6,000 to replace that. Now, I spoke to Jason about that. That's a room that isn't used. Um, there's a copy machine in there, but there's a layer of dust on it. It hasn't been used in a while. They basically go in there, use the microwave, and that's about it. Nobody sits in there, nothing. So um, we're probably going to end up repairing it in-house. Um, got a couple of custodians that know how to solder and whatnot. So we'll, we'll look at fixing it ourselves. Um, circulator pump at the middle school. As you know, I've been trying to get Riverdale Plumbing to come back and and repair that. Um, they made two or three attempts at trying to do so. So I ended up ordering the pots and on January 21st, I rebuilt it myself and it has now been running for two weeks with no issues. So that's good news. Uh, Millville Elementary School, the circulator pump has been repaired by Boston Mechanical. Um, that's been running for two weeks as well and continues to run. As you know, the building automation system continues to be a problem. Siemens did come out last week and do another walkthrough to see if there was another alternative they could go. Um, but due to the supply delays, we're still looking at March. Um, 
as you know, last Saturday with the cold weather, we had a sprinkler pipe in the Millville Elementary School in the lobby area. Um, as you know, water doesn't flow through a circulator pump, so I mean to a sprinkler pipe, sorry. So what they did, when they joined the two pipes, they used a compression fitting with rubber O-rings. And because that pipe got so cold, the O-ring shrunk, which allowed the water to drip past it. It was just a steady drip, nothing too serious. And all indications showed that this had been going on for a while. There was some damage to the drywall up above um, that had been painted over, and you can see the, the wrinkles in it and stuff. And there was rust on the pipe as well, so this had been happening for a while. So the cutout I made in the ceiling, we're going to put a, uh, an access door. So when it does get cold like that again, we can open up that access door and allow heat to get up there. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. Otherwise, we'd have to get a sprinkler company in there, drain the whole system down, replace those O-rings, or weld the pipe, one or the other. But I think just putting that access door will be sufficient. <coughs> Security alarm at Millville has been acting up. Um, sporadically you get uh, alarm calls. I received one one morning at 2.30 in the morning. Went down there, found nothing. We did change out a motion detector um, and it's been running fine for the last three days. Uh, knock on wood, don't get another 2, 2 a.m. call. And as you know, the water issue. Uh, we did buy 7,000 gallons of water from uh, when socket today had it delivered we drained the tank down to approximately One foot inside the tank which left about 350 gallons of water. We added the 7,000 gallons to that um, Tomorrow we'll run it and it should be good enough to wash your hands and hopefully the food and vegetables and stuff so. And prior to that we were we went out Scott went out. God bless you Scott and bought gallon jugs and put them in the classrooms and bathrooms and so that the kids could wash their hands and yeah we could rinse vegetables and everything um, yeah and we'll actually give credit to lynn robinson and some of our special needs students they took a field trip to walmart and picked up great. 50 gallons of water and just them to the schools so huh. it was great to get them out and help them out and as you know uh february vacation they're gonna change the media inside the filter filtration system um, that's step one of two pots they're going to do. Uh, they're going to come back April vacation, and they're going to switch over from chlorine to pegmanganese, pag, pag, uh, something like that. I can't pronounce that word, sorry. Manganese. Pegmanganese, that's it. Manganese, yeah. 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 Um, and hopefully that solves the problem. Any questions, concerns? Nice job working on the equipment. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things I should have just did it myself, but it's a, I hate to mess something up. I don't have the insurance to cover that. Thank you, Scott. And Scott, thanks so much on your relentless focus on getting that water tanker. So rolling up the driveway today. I know that was not easy. And you, you know, and if everyone understands how this works. You've got the town of Millville that manages this. They have a water consultant. They have a water operator. They have Mass DEP that's managing all of this, and we have Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott single-handedly made sure that that tanker got up there. They tried to push back every which way to not do this. So Mass so, DEP only has Scott. three tankers on their list that can transport water yeah, to the facilities. Yeah. One is in Vermont, four hours away, and they're like, our truck will freeze by the time we even get down there. We're not interested. <laughs> Another one is in Connecticut, approximately three hours away. And he was like, sorry, I'm leaving to Canada for Canada for two weeks. I'm not interested. And quite honestly, he says, my trucks don't go back on the road till April because of the cold weather. Oh. Um, this gentleman I found up in, um, he's from Mass. He was about two hours away, um, up past Springfield. Um, he was reluctant, and I'm like, listen, I'll find you the water, you know, because he didn't want to truck his water all the way down. Yeah. So I said, I'll find it. So I contacted the city of Winsocket, knowing that in the past, you know, I've seen them filling up pool trucks, you know, transport water. And, um, and they said the same thing. They said, usually we don't, you know, open our hydrants or anything to 
fill trucks until April. But he says, uh, I told him it's an emergency situation, and he says, all right, we're willing to help you out. So kudos to them as well. That's awesome. Yep. So we are on the way. To yes, hopefully that 7,000 gallons gets us to uh, February 20th or 17th. And if not, we'll fill it up. <laughs> I'll run the Walmart again. <laughs> if I gotta fill it up again, I'm running the Walmart, buying the gallon jugs, dumping it inside the tank. Thank you, Scott, for all your work on that. Thank you, Scott. Uh, moving on to school committee forum. Does anyone have anything to share? I just, I had sent an email out to Jason today and attached the town administrator and. and um, and, and the chairman of the Board of Selectmen in Blackstone, uh, because of <clears throat> some questions that were taking place on some of the meetings on, on some school, school committee budget um, issues in, in Blackstone. And generally, I use the, the town's website to review previous meetings and, and research uh, certain things. But I noticed that the school committee, so the school committee in Blackstone uh, meetings are generally played live and then they go on, on Blackstone, we have a, what's called Government On Demand, and so you can watch it again on the website. And, and so the last meeting was October 13, 2022. Um, that that's, was downloaded, and you can, you know, usually it's downloaded the next day. From, so there was a lot of meetings mixed, missed during that time, and then I was told that we, we haven't been live in, in Blackstone in some time. So that's the purpose of that, me sending that email, was just to follow up to see if there was um, a, a miscommunication, uh, just what was missed there. Um, but it wasn't a, the intention wasn't to point fingers at anyone. I just wanted to get it back on, uh, back online and back live, especially what Monday night's meeting coming with all the two towns and the committees and, and such. And, um, and I understand that we have YouTube here, but both town, town of Blackstone and Millville gets funding through the subscribers and cable, and part of PEG uh, access is public, educational, and governmental. So it, it, the funding is focused on for the program and education as well. So I just wanted to make sure that the public had every opportunity, whether it's on YouTube or a lot of people do watch Channel 8 and Blackstone that, that may not admit to it, but you know, and so I just wanted <laughs> to clarify the purpose of uh, that email, and that's all it is. And, and apparently we are uh, back on live on Channel 8 tonight, so Good. it was effective. That's great. Thank you uh, for your help with that, nope. Mr. Superintendent. That's all I have. Anyone else, Ted? No. Nope. I have nothing. Um, Tammy, the meeting Monday is moving to, uh, to the high school. Okay. Yeah. So uh, upcoming meetings, joint meeting with school committee board, boards of selectmen and finance subcommittees will be Monday, February 13th at 7 p.m. at the B, uh, Blackstone Millville Regional High School. Is there a, sorry, did you just say, tell in me the, a room and I? Um, the library. In That's the library yeah. with a candlestick, uh, in the library. Um, and then the following meeting is a general school committee <coughs> meeting being held on March 9th. 6 p.m. at Hartnett Middle School. Do we need executive session? No, we can cancel. Um, and we are going to cancel executive session, which was on the agenda. We do not need that. So I am looking for a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.